I just can't help myself. Oh, sing wait, sing that again. No, 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 don't do that. Don't start 2022 like that. (laughs) Sing, Reggie. No, okay, we don't have to sing. Um, what's going on, everybody? Today is a very, very, very special day. It is. Um, this is not only the first episode of the year, but I am joined by some some great people, some great energy, right? Alex, I want to just say to you, thank you for fucking up your streak. I appreciate you not coming in today because you never miss episodes. You so don't. Anybody who's never. listening, Alex is not here. Devon Terrell is not here. It is myself, and we have the amazing Reggie. She is. She's actually your attendance is pretty freaking. I am. I'm amazing. very dedicated. I don't think I've missed an episode either. You don't miss episodes. even on my birthday. Your I birthday. Came in early. I could like say, "Yo, we got to record at two a.m." She's here at two a.m. It could be yes. two in the afternoon. And like, I live mad far, and so you, you know. Do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes. But outside of just me and Reggie, we are also joined by. It's two, not just one. We got two really, really amazing people, friends of the show, supporters, um, and they're also legends in their own right, in my eyes, right? And when I say legend, I know we throw the word legend around kind of loosely, but when I say a legend, I mean people who are going to be legends in their respective fields. Like, that sometimes you just get energy around you, and you can tell, oh, wait, this person is out of here. This person is... He's going to hire me one day if I keep fucking slacking. Like, <laughs> I got to get on my shit. So the first person I want to introduce is my guy. It is Penn Griffey, <laughs> Hip Hop DX's own, uh, my, my bald brethren, and also another Neo Stan. We yes, got my sir. guy in the building from the Stay Busy Pod. My bald brother. Yeah, my bald brother. Bald we got a ballers. Rip. Bald nigga ballers. Bald nigga. It's oh, my goodness gracious. It's a movement. We got my guy Armand Sadler in the building. What's good, man? I'm good, man. Thank y'all for having me. Love y'all as always family uh always happy to be here need to know what you need to know when you need to know it you already mm-hmm. know man thank you oh, thank he did you that for really joining good. us hey. <laughs> he, 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 you know he, i do this staying up <laughs> you staying up and then um as always if you're watching youtube you may not see him on 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 uh on the camera but he has been such a huge contribution to this podcast behind the scenes he shows uh the the infinity amount of love he's knowledgeable he's been on this podcast before i actually i'll be honest let me tell let me talk to the need to know family real quick <laughs> So I was going to put him on camera, Reg. Okay. But then I said, you know what? His OG could really be my OG. Mm. And I don't want no smoke with small <laughs> niggas from Brooklyn. Like, <laughs> Devon Terrell, I didn't want to fight. I didn't want you to press me. He been I, working out, too. He's he, on, like, what, like, day 30 bro, something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Day, day 22. Checks in daily. <laughs> like, I don't want no smoke with you, Dev. But I did want this guy to just at least have a microphone because I think he's super knowledgeable. And we wanted to piss you off a little bit. We got my guy, <laughs> this uber talented uh, producer, super producer, legend in the making, Levens. What's good, thank phone you. man? What's up, man? I'm always happy to be here. So, yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining yeah, us. I appreciate it. And, and most of the time on the pod, like he doesn't have a mic, but he be saying things. And then every time he says one thing, it sets Dev into like a fucking <laughs> madman zone. Like he knows how to get Dev so riled up. You are the puppet master. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna call you. That's a fun yeah. because what like not only because he's super talented, right? His <laughs> hands with the keys, super <laughs> fucking dope. I can't oh, wait yeah. to talk Y'all about don't you, know him. Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But he also controls Devon Terrell. Mm. He, you know how to like get a response <laughs> out of Dev. Yeah, because the yeah, mm. people don't hear what he says without yes. the mic, and then oh my gosh, yeah. you're responsible for so much. Uh, before we get into that, actually, let's do this. Somebody break your heart. 2022. I have to let y'all know. I'm letting go of Neo. What? Come on. This is my new favorite R&B pop artist. Uh, He's handing out me. fades in 2022, bro. What you say? Listen to this. He's this guy is fighting people. Was him. He's fighting people. Jason Derulo. Derulo. Hits. He got hits. Jason like, Derulo. My Haitian brethren. They don't want to see him in a He's person. Haitian. Yep. Oh, oh he is Haitian. Oh, is that why, like, his right hook looks so sturdy? <laughs> Haitian men are Stay strong. Connected. Now, yeah. like, between you and like Nigerians, y'all are real powerful <laughs> men. You know, we, we we've overcome a lot. We I, have to. I think <laughs> no we overcome. We, <laughs> we just celebrated the Haitian Revolution a couple days ago. You know what I'm saying? Big Zo, Big Zo. Sh- shout out to y'all. And I would be remiss if I didn't play this song before we get into our friends and the people who are making this podcast happen. This song. Mm-hmm. 
in middle school, classic. Maybe high school. He didn't get enough credit for this. Classic. But when I seen him hand out like a two piece, like he's handing out two pieces at the airport. I'm riding solo. I'm riding solo. I'm riding solo. Imagine if that guy punched you in your face, yo. <laughs> I don't. I don't that. want to imagine that. But imagine. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't ride solo. Then. You, oh. <laughs> ah, I wish we had like the. <laughs> <laughs> Dad jokes all 2022. Yeah, I love to see it. Before we get into everything, Jason Derulo and 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 why he was so upset to be called Usher, like the greatest fucking mu- musician ever. Uh, let's take the time to talk to our people. This episode is brought to you by Rasta Clot. If you don't know, now you know. They provide nothing but good energy. They are bracelets. They have collections, different type of collections. Me personally, I'm a sports fan. Uh, my brother, he is a huge Kevin Durant fan. I have another brother who's a huge Steph Curry, Clay Thompson. Thompson fan. I went to rostercloud.com and I copped them the bracelets for their favorite players. There's a bevy of teams that you guys can go onto the website, pick out the collection that you want. Ladies, I know you are into the zodiac signs. Mm-hmm. I too am a zodiac sign king. Mm-hmm. I too <laughs> have a birthday coming up. Mm-hmm. I yes, next too Friday, Capricorn King. Love mm-hmm. to give out gifts. So if you want to get something sleek, if you want to get something that represents positivity, yeah. please go over to rostaclot.com. At the checkout, we are giving you a discount here on the Need to Know Podcast. The code is Need to Know Pod. Um and I'm going to also put that in the description in case I'm saying mm-hmm. the wrong code. But I am pretty <laughs> sure. Make sure you definitely look at the description. But uh, it is Needs No Pod at the checkout for 20% off. Let them know who sent you. Again, that is rostercloud.com. They also have a, a bracelet, Armand. I don't know if you know. But uh, I like to wear things on my wrist normally. Yeah, me too. And they have a bracelet that says uh, good vibes only. Okay. Good vibes only. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, and positivity. You know. Like, they just be preaching, like, such positive stuff. So why wouldn't yeah, you? Why and they're so I? cute. They're, like, sleek. They're nice. They have every single color. And, so. fellas, I know y'all cheat. Like, what? You, for for <laughs> real, fellas, the, the niggas are cheap. <sighs> oh, oh, I thought you said cheat. Oh no. God. I was like, where did no. this come no. from? No, they just cheap. You oh know what goodness. I'm saying? It's affordable. It's a nice, affordable gift. And mm-hmm. it's thoughtful. Like, mm-hmm. I'm always about the thought. I want people to know that, hey, I went on. I got this for you because this means something to me. And I want it to mean something to you so rostercloud.com make sure you guys go check that out it is need to know pod at the checkout again make sure you check the description of this episode to get the correct code if i'm saying the wrong code but i'm pretty sure i'm not uh yeah rostercloud.com nice family gang also we'll talk about this a little bit later but the hmd studios for all of your podcast needs it is the home to the need to know podcast Mm -hmm. it is the home to the stay busy podcast Mm -hmm. hosted by my guy armand sadler so devon terrell i would be remiss if i didn't give you in this amazing space you're just due as you did for me when i wasn't here uh i want to talk about purpose cmos but i'll save that for later because i don't want to continue to just you know what i'm saying add y'all to death just give y'all all these ads 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 right but alex did say that the sea moss keeps them dripping good oh my goodness it keeps them leaking let's good. not misquote him Yo. <laughs> no but when i say leaking you know like, he like said oh, it like urinating no, no. Like, sweaty? like libido no. like like he's backed oh. up he said that on air in 4k Letting out the ink Like three episodes nice. ago Nice Okay well you'll be hearing from me then. <laughs> Oh my god <laughs> Purpose Seamoss.com We'll talk about that A little bit later But yeah make sure Y'all check that out Anyway let's get back Into these tunes <laughs> Did y'all see Jason Derulo Punch somebody in the face Yes I did I did see the clip It was hilarious It wasn't in 4K It was not It was like the, the Traditional world star quality Thing that we all missed but you know what they've been saying on Twitter? The, the low quality videos be the funniest. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> but think about all the things that Jason Derulo could punch somebody in the face for, right? Like the guy called him Usher. And I don't really think that's a diss. No, no, no. Me neither. But he said, yo, Usher, fuck you, bitch, or some shit like that. He that's did say something rude. like mad rude. Okay, he mm. did. Say- he didn't just say Usher. Because I would think that. You know that picture that circulates every year of somebody flipping, tumbling down Mm -hmm. the stairs at the Grammys (laughs) or the Met Gala? And they say it's Jason Derulo every year? That shit is so funny. Wouldn't that kind of 
send you off in a frenzy? I wouldn't be surprised if he had a lot of pent up anger. Because remember when he was making all those TikToks during the pandemic, like of him baking crazy shit? Yeah, yeah. he'll put like people, fruit loops people are, like, and like slandering putting... him for no reason. It's like, yo, just let the man. What do you cook? mean for no like, reason? Literally... No, he deserved that slander. You, think you so? were one of the people. Oh, what? No, I wasn't slandering him. You asked like a genuine question. Mm-hmm. Who would you think of when we asked like who's an alien walking this earth? I said Jason Derulo because he wears like sleeveless hoodies and stuff. <laughs> so sleeveless hoodies are not valid. No, I'm kidding. No, I was joking. Shout out to my guy, Jason. No, he really had us in chokehold, like in middle school. Him and Jay Sean. Yeah, classic. Mm-hmm. Jay Sean. That's a very specific Jay. era. Kings down, 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 yeah. down. Sean Kings thing. That was that was like an era. It, it, it was like the black pop stars because they weren't really R and B. And I hate that's pop, I hate yeah. Like that's one of my pet peeves when I see a black person that just sings mm-hmm. or does pop music and they just automatically put R and B on them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah. course they it's do that with Rihanna sometimes. Mm-hmm. Rihanna's not R and B, not at all. The weekend is not R and B. He's not. Oh. Well, not now. Well, not now. He yeah. started out R and B in transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely transition. Need a switch. And he, he still got some R and B in his bag too. If anybody doesn't know, because I feel like on this podcast, yeah, we say we like music. <laughs> But I am with a collective that really loves music. <laughs> Literally like, all three of us. I am in fucking dangerous territory on this podcast today. Because, yeah, Dev, like, Devon Terrell, he has no choice but to be knowledgeable in music because he, he's, he's still in the game. Like, mm-hmm. he's an artist, right? But I think that if he wasn't so fucking talented, he would probably lean closer to me. Whereas, like, he likes what he likes. He listens yeah. to what he listens yeah. to. Even now, he always says that, like, oh, I yeah. haven't been, like, super tapped in into everything that drops every week. He, like, yeah. stick, he has said that before on the pod. Yeah, yeah right. Like it's like tough to, his to do, too. Himself. When you're focused on your own stuff, it's hard to... Yeah. yeah, you everything. really shouldn't because yeah. then it influences you. Well, I don't know. I'm acting like I'm a fucking artist, but I don't know. But it's if my you just, yeah. yeah. And and Alex, we all know Alex. Oh, is let's, music let us man. not. Out now, <laughs> yeah. out now, every Friday. <laughs> I, honestly, I think when Alex leaks, I think he leaks music. Like, oh my goodness! I think something about just new songs and shit. It just <laughs> gives him such a, a hard on. That's a that is like, image. oh shit! I gotta like, I gotta let that out. He's like, yo, I missed one week, and this is how you guys speak I think on he, my name. Oh, for yeah, I think that's it's a, a music. crazy. He's just chilling at home, being wholesome. This nigga be leaking Griselda. But saying? with the three of y'all. <laughs> with the three of y'all this is a different kind of dynamic and and when we talk about music like i really got to be on my p's and q's like a lot of people don't know this is the young bull of our podcast mm-hmm. uh leavens <laughs> leavens is like the young guy like number one on the industry list he was born in like <laughs> 2000 not. and what 2002 2003 that's crazy <sighs> i don't even know people could still be born like oh my, oh my god. god that's crazy <laughs> oh my god 2003 and he yeah. knows more about music than me. He does, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not even going to say it, Cap. Like, you don't look that young, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's a young guy, young Holy young man, shit. and he's, he's, he's doing this thing. Uh, but when it comes to this music shit, I am kind of afraid to kind of dive into the music. You shouldn't be, though. I, I, I honestly get, like, a little... Not frustrated. I'm like, damn. Like, like some people feel that way, too, like, talking music with someone who works in it. Like, mm-hmm. they feel like they mm-hmm. have to prove something or they have to, like, be... As like super knowledge, I'm like no, I just I just talk about what I like. I don't mm-hmm. I don't want to. And Armand and I have always been like the two on like the timeline that are kind of like guys. Like let's stop spreading so much negativity when everyone's yeah. like fucking slandering an album. We, me and Armand are always the ones that are like guys. Like fucking chill, please. Yeah. Like, yeah. So for me, uh, <laughs> I guess I guess I'll get my gripes off right in, in sure. 2022. I want to stop this trend because there's something that artists have been doing for centuries. And when I say centuries, I mean within the last five years because Instagram (laughs) is like popping out, right? But there's something that artists have been doing. And I think now that one of my favorite artists has finally like subscribed to this culture of snippets on Instagram, I think I've reached like the plateau of like, fam, we have to stop this. I I can't, I can't, because just drop the music. No, Why? they want to like engage. It. Yeah, you gotta promote. Why but not? They never release their fire snippets. Like <laughs> Levens, I don't understand you. You are snippet man. Mm. <laughs> First off, yes, yeah, Levens and Capella Gray. Yeah. <laughs> Capella, Capella Gray. Capella Gray, Capella Gray, is Capella Gray snippet posts man. a snippet every day. Yeah. So I don't really understand it. And I want to play a snippet, and I'm gonna start out really fucking biased because you know that's that's what I kind of do on this podcast, right? Um, so I I, I, li- I heard this snippet. And I'm like, this song is never going to come out. And I'm going to be very, 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 very extremely upset. Because 
why do artists do this? Mm. You being a music journalist, you being a music producer, you being a music goddess. Like, I just need <laughs> answers on why people do this. And I want y'all to listen to this snippet and give me y'all thoughts on if I'm tripping, if okay. I should not feel like this. Okay. Okay? All right. Let's 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 figure this out. Is it I feel my head. Is that Neil? That's hard. That so was beautiful. a snippet of a ballad that I'm going to get married to when I find my <laughs> that wife. That's beautiful. First off, that like, is hard. I don't know where I'm going to get married, who I'm going to get married to, but I need that song in my library. Leavings, why do y'all do this? I, no, just to test the water sometimes. I think, yeah, I think it's kind of like you want to wanna see what they're going to say yeah. about it. Like, oh, y'all like this? Like, and if it's they're like, roll oh. out or, or to test it out. But that is hard. That has to come out. Come on. Yeah. But that sounds better than some of the things he's been putting out now. That sounds better yeah. than everything he's put out in the <laughs> yeah. last five years. It, it gives me old Neil, yeah. And that's so my guy. But it's just like, all right, I, I know Meek Mill, he does it a lot. Meek Mill yeah, was a snippet does. guy. Snippet Chris man. Brown was a snippet guy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a few artists that just play snippets on their stories in the background, in the studio, or whatever. And then I never really paid attention to it because, again, I'm, I'm a fan of these people. Like Chris Brown, as soon as he releases, I'm going to listen to it. Meek Mill, as soon as he drops, I'm going to listen to it. Mm-hmm. But... When it hits close to home, <laughs> when you hear a song you want to get married to, mm-hmm. when like I just heard the words, I, I would, think it's gonna come out. I would Why walk yeah, through sounds, fire, sounds too good. Reggie. Well, just on a small tangent, but you literally said it. Do you guys know what songs that you want to get married to? Other than that, I, other I than this snippet, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because to me, for a long time, I was gonna do a best part by fucking Daniel Caesar, but now he's yep. canceled now. So you can still do it. Um, Is he definitely still? still I don't yeah. know. Wasn't he like caping? I probably would pick either the same thing or Ed Sheeran. Uh, thinking out loud. Mm. That's basic. I'm thinking uh, Xavier Omar. So <laughs> much basic. more. Or Young Thug. Love you more. Okay, so you give me a song. I'm gonna play it so the people who who aren't familiar with these songs can hear what you want to get married to. Mm-hmm. So what was your uh, your choice, Reggie? I don't know. No, I'm saying I don't know because I was gonna do best part. By Daniel Caesar featuring her. Classic. So let's, I mean, he does, does, is he canceled? Is he really? It's a, cancel culture is not real to me, but he's the closest that's not R. Kelly. He's, he's the closest to being canceled that's not R. Kelly. Ooh, you know who else might be canceled? Who? Trey Song. He might be. I yeah. think it might be over. He might be. Like, his talent ain't that, he's not that talented. He's not putting out music anymore. It's like, it's, it's like we talked about with Dojo when I was here last time. Mm-hmm. Good music will uncancel you. He's not putting shit out. So all people have to focus on is the negative headlines. Oh, you guys know Wifey by Next? Of course. Oh, yes. oh, of no course. Wifey. I think, no, but that's for the reception part. Yeah. Yo, my wedding's going to be so lit. <laughs> that's, that's oh, my person. God. You gotta I think about it all joint. the time. So, Reggie, this yes, is the song that wifey. you said you were going to And he'd be like, to. let's take a sippy sippy. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? Sippy, sippy. <laughs> A sippy sippy A sippy crazy. sippy I don't know why this isn't playing But you said best part Is her and Daniel Caesar Or yes, just Daniel I mean I'm sure the, If you the, the, if the you're listen to this it. And you don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. The streets know that joint I don't know I, sh- I should put more thought into this Cause I'm not walking down Obviously oh, To the yeah. traditional wedding song So I really should put some thought into this Oh so this is it right here Oh, oh you know what I didn't even okay, have us plugged in Hey Oh no I won't so you want to walk down the aisle to this? I did, but it just doesn't sit right with my soul anymore. It doesn't. It doesn't. But didn't Justin Bieber like uncancel him? Yo, <laughs> we're listening to Justin Bieber now. No. I don't think I he. Am. I don't think he <laughs> oh, we know, him. we know. Hey, that's my guys, though. But then he uncancel him. He put I don't him know. On a Grammy oh, why? Because of the song? Yeah, because he got I like got a, 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 I don't know. Got a hit song. I, is, but I just I, I want another not the song. The focal point of Peaches either It's Bieber and this Giveon, like Daniel's yeah. versus whatever. It was made. It was yeah, made. But I, I really don't know my wedding song. But he really might get a Grammy now. So yeah. I'm definitely missing like a classic that I always loved. I'll, I'll be I'm back at one is hard. So huh? Back at one. Back at one. Yeah. yeah that's I had, no. You know why I can't fuck with that song? I had an ex who had an ex who dedicated that song to her. So now whenever I see Brian McKnight, I don't fuck with Brian McKnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta think about. Yo, the, he's uh, the best. That's, that's the record that um we discovered Reggie could play piano to. Yes. 
I'll play it for <laughs> you at your wedding. Like, I don't know if Patrice knows. She sings, she dances, she plays in piano. Oh my goodness. Patrice don't know. She raps, Guys, yeah. She, be, she rap. Oh, yeah, she can freestyle. I don't. Rap, like, what? Can you no, break I dance? Rap, no. You dress <laughs> like you could break dance. Wow. Could that was a little, nah, you that was a little problematic in some way. Showtime. I don't know how, but. Do a windmill. <laughs> do a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. Just I probably, do a I feel I feel like I could. I think you could. I fully feel like I could. I feel like I have it in me. I think if I had a, a a song to get married to, it would be Stevie Wonder, Ribbon in the Sky. Mm. Like that. And I know pr- probably, uh, let me not say that. I don't want to discredit my future wife because I would hope that she heard this song. But if not, this is definitely the song that I kind of want to walk down the aisle to mm. envision just a love that you can never duplicate a love that'll last a lifetime and beyond and forever and ever and ever and more okay somebody that you look at and you said i want to drop my leakish off in you yeah i want to leak hey, in yo. you baby mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when i hear this song and i hear these chords and there's just something about it that says I want this forever, baby. Yeah, talk your shit. I want this forever. Yo, baby. he's in I his back beat. right now. Ah. <laughs> like her walking down the aisle to this. Just listen. You're gonna cry. I'm gonna. I want to cry right now. Ball. Do you think you're gonna cry when you watch your wifey walk down? What? Easily. To this song? Uh, Do you know? I love that shit. I eat that shit up. That and proposal videos, I will literally cry in my room for like three hours. Yeah. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. Love is beautiful. I know it is. Love is truly beautiful. It's all right. That should be hurting, niggas. I ain't gonna lie. That too. That shit is that hurtful. Too. Yo, leave it. I was thinking the same thing. Whenever the day Oh, comes, no. You haven't been through shit yet. I don't mean to be that old head, but no, no, no. Yeah. just fucking wait. It hurts. Your time is coming, young blood. It hurts. You just need like that one. Everybody needs that one life-changing heartbreak. Like, you just got to go through it once. Nah. Yeah. I don't, don't really wish that upon that. people, but you just really, it really re- changes you. It, like Yeah. Uh, yeah, you need it. You learn a you lot from it. it. You need nah. Yeah. I don't want that shit. You don't you want it, but you need it. You're damn right. It's, you're it's old. Like, it's There's a lot of things in life that you need that you don't want. Mm. You need that experience. Ooh, yo, he, that was that was. You that need was that experience. Yo, you wise, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I see. You, like, I that's why talking. I be tapped into stay busy because <laughs> you really do be talking on stay busy, bro. I ain't bad at you. Thank you, bro. Let's see, real quick. I'm gonna play this song just a little bit more so y'all can envision my wedding. I want y'all to think about my wedding, right? Just think about my. Do you guys? Do you guys want? Oh, sorry. Nah, keep going. Talk. Do you guys want like a big wedding? Are you guys that have, you know how people be like dreaming of their wedding since they're like young and stuff? Yeah. You do? My wedding's gonna be nuts. I don't know. I want it's I want a fun nuts. wedding, but I've never been that type of girl to like picture my wedding, my wedding dress and shit like that. It sounds fucking stressful. Y'all sound like I'm in love with both of you when you speak over this song. <laughs> this song <laughs> is made by love. <laughs> Please. No, listen, no, for real. Like listen to Armand's laugh over the song. Laugh again, nigga. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Yeah. Armand has the deepest nah. voice I've ever heard in my nah, entire really life. Does. Thank you, thank you. I thought it was Alex. You could be in Boys to Men. But you might have smoked Alex on his own pod with your voice. You no, I mean? Armand's voice is deeper than Alex's. Is which it? is crazy, yeah. You know what it is? Alex has like the smooth operator voice. He does a very smooth voice. He has like that smooth <laughs> Armand's voice is deep. Like it's like yeah, bass. People think I make it like this. So I'm like, no, this is literally my no, voice. No, I'm like, no. How you get your voice like that though? Uh, I don't know. Damn, Just how would you feel if like you were a guy and you had like a super high voice? Um, I might don't I, I don't have a high voice. No, you have a normal. Not really? Voice. No, okay. You, All right. you're t- t- towards the middle. Because like when I be, when <laughs> hey I, guys, when I hear you <laughs> later. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> when I hear Armand and Alex, you be like, like hey, wh- hey, what's up, guys? But that, like, but <laughs> now y'all exposing me because that's why I wear headphones because I got to be mindful. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I used to pod without headphones, mm. but then I would listen back and sound like Mickey Mouse. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I'm you like, don't, you don't. nah, we we can't do this. Like you got to be mindful and conscious of how you know <laughs> the like baritone. Yeah, you got to have. What's going on? Man, you listen to no podcast. <laughs> like, yo, you never sound like that. Fucking bass in your voice, bro. What the fuck yeah. are you doing? No, because usually my voice, like a lot of my friends, friends and family, have always told me I have a nice, like, speaking voice. Mm-hmm. But since fucking be on a podcast, you guys rile me up so much that like it just doesn't stay calm anymore. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, what the fuck? Guys? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't ever want to hold myself back for the sake of sounding cool. Like, if I'm mm-hmm. passionate about something, I'm gonna just let it come out. So. Speaking about speaking 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 of. Being passionate on podcasts. Mm. Did you guys witness? <laughs> you guys are both like, mm. 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 did you guys see um, Asian Doll walking out of a podcast with like fucking twenty people in the room around the table just speaking nonsense? I've never seen Asian Doll. You, you didn't see the clip? I've never seen her. 
Oh no, I'm joking. I I I, I did see it, mm-hmm. but I didn't know that was her, and I don't know what she does. And now Twitter is on this spree of just slandering male podcasts in general, saying that they have no substance, that they just be talking about dating all the time, yeah. toxicity. <laughs> and as two men. Uh, who have like successful podcasts how do you feel about this and just podcasts in general i feel like everyone just kind of like always says that like like you know how even you have said like oh i don't introduce myself as a potter i don't yeah I don't. like why what is the idea around podcasts that is it kind of still like uh, or no armand i'll let you go first and then I'll, I'll take it from there i think the boom of podcasts in the last three years has made it that and th- this is not to say people shouldn't make podcasts. If you have something you're passionate about, make a podcast about it, take it as far as you can. But I think the boom of podcasts has made it a trendy thing where everyone mm-hmm. feels like- Everyone wants a podcast. Oh, this topic I like, I should have a podcast. But it's like, you know, there are clearly some s- skilled podcasters and some people who it's like, oh, this is cool, but you mm-hmm. maybe you don't need to be doing this. And that's not to shade anyone in particular. Um, but I'm I think people out. look at podcasts as this thing that like, people make it part of their identity. People make it mm-hmm. part of their personality. Kind of like years ago when like R&B parties started and everyone was like, oh, I love R&B. They made it part of their mm-hmm. personality. Like I should have been born in the 90s because I relate to 90s R&B. Levin says that shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and so people have made that their thing with podcasts and we and we we see a lot of these podcasts come across the timeline where people are just talking about relationships and toxic shit. Like Twitter topics become podcast yeah. topics. And it's like, why do we need... 15 different podcasts talking about the same shit that it's really not productive. You're not really challenging anything. You're just, you're trying to say the most controversial thing mm-hmm. to go viral. A lot mm-hmm. of people want that following. They want that audience. They want that visibility. And then there are podcasts like us that get kind of lumped into that where it's yeah. like black men only talk about this, that, and third. Mm-hmm. It's like, and well, no, if you really took the time to listen, mm-hmm. you would know we have more substantial topics than that, mm-hmm. but because people only focus on the clips that come across the timeline, they only see the controversial shit. So I think is is it's almost like <clears throat> the um, the microwave era podcasting, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so when people say, "Hey, I have a podcast," it's like, all right, everybody can have a podcast, mm-hmm. but do you take it serious? Are you going to be so around? So for in me, two years? I feel like. Being that, and I guess maybe we can finally answer that question of why I don't introduce myself as a podcaster, mm-hmm. is because I feel like it, it, it. I almost feel like the landscape of podcasting does me a disservice as the time that I put into podcasting, as the student that I've become of this industry, of this landscape, of mm-hmm. this media form. I feel like it's almost a disservice because people don't really take it for what it is, yeah. which is the next major wave of media. Like whenever I talk to people, I always describe to them like, yo, podcasting is the gold rush. Mm-hmm. We are in the gold rush mm-hmm. of and you're podcasting. Right. Like you, you've been saying this. Like, and you're right. I've been saying it mm-hmm. for a very long time, and because I take it so serious, and I feel like other people just do it because it's like you know what? I can't be a rapper. I can't be an <laughs> athlete. I can't do this. I'm gonna start a podcast, yeah. and it's like, all right, cool, and that's great. Go for it. Mm-hmm. But being that we're here on 161 episodes, mm-hmm. all the bonus content we've done, the mm-hmm. Patreon content that we've done, like we've accumulated over 200 pieces of content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just last year, we had over three million minutes listened, watched on YouTube mm-hmm. alone. Like three point four. Congrats. Three point four million. Like, Congrats. please, can we clap that up, Drew? And that's please, only please, on YouTube. Please. That's all. just on Yo, YouTube. Our audio numbers. Three point four million minutes watched on the platform. That's insane. That's dude. what. Like, that's what I kind of think of it as because I said either last week or two weeks ago I wasn't a podcast girl. I had my like two shows that I listened to, and then like when I wanted some entertainment while working, but I wasn't a podcast girl. But now I kind of like reframe it as in like, yo, we just have like a show. Like mm-hmm. we literally have a show yeah. that people tune into. It's and even if we're not talking about serious topics, like people are saying that Twitter, Twitter is saying we have to do that, but whatever. But when we don't, people want that escape from talking about fucking politics and yeah. racism mm-hmm. all day. So when we're just being funny for two hours, that's cool too. And like, you guys make non-serious topics still substantial to listen to. Mm-hmm. Like there are some people who just want to say the funniest thing. Mm-hmm. You guys are naturally funny. You, it doesn't feel like you guys are trying. Mm-mm. We're trying hard this to be something. This is therapy for yes. all four of us in yeah. some shape or form. Mm-hmm. Like Devon Terrell has gotten on his podcast and said, yo, thank y'all because this is my therapy. Mm-hmm. I know Alex, shit, 
Reggie, you can attest to this. Mm -hmm. Alex doesn't talk at all. No, but and then he be talking on the podcast and just like realizing shit and just opening up. Yeah, Alex doesn't talk. People hear that and they can relate to. We're helping people Mm -hmm. through things. When people DM me and the podcast page, like we, I know we're reaching real people. Mm -hmm. So fuck you guys who shit on podcasts (laughs) (laughs) that don't listen. No kidding. They not. No, clearly if they're listening to us like right now, this part, clearly you guys appreciate it. Yeah. But I think the, the, the podcast that go viral and you see mm-hmm. like, you know, like those moments, like I think I seen maybe two, three weeks ago, there was a girl who pulled out a gun on the podcast because I think it was oh, actually no, no, no. something was, with academics or yeah, something academics like that. Podcast. And mm. she, she attempted to pull out a gun and, you know, I, I kind of did my research on that particular podcast and then I kind of got to see what they were about. And like they have yeah. a massive audience and they're doing really well. But then I always think about, all right, cool. When this buzz and when this phase and when this kind of uh, content goes out of style, then are, you know, podcasts of that nature going to be able to transition? Yeah. Does it withstand the test of time? And I feel like with this podcast, no matter how big or how small, and I always talk about it each and every single week, like, yo, there was a time where I looked at the numbers and we were getting 50 listens in a month. Mm-hmm. And I would fucking have a nervous mental breakdown <laughs> he would. because I'm like, <laughs> we suck. <laughs> Yo, when we lose one Patreon subscriber, he hits the chat like, guys, I don't know if we could do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to end it all. God uh, damn it. And we're but, all just like, and Dev is like, chin up, Savon. Come on. Like, <laughs> and then honestly, Reggie saved my life over the fucking break because. I was like, yo, break, because uh, we weren't going to record. And then you was like, Savon, you know, like we have like a real supporter and, and listenership. They're going to still be there. And when oh, you said that, it was I so simple. Yeah, and I was after- like, oh, shit, she's so fucking right. And then we recorded yeah. it the next week and our numbers were like steady. And I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, they're not going to just abandon us because we missed a week because someone was sick or couldn't make it. Like, yeah, we just we have a really loyal audience. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah, and all those podcasts who just do men versus women, like I take pride in that we don't have to do that to kind of get mm-hmm. to where we got to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, we can just be us. Like, mm-hmm. in 2022, we're able to start this podcast off with Jason Derulo. <laughs> yeah. I take pride in that, personally. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's people who are still tuning in as we speak. I like that. I like us. I like I like the way that we're kind of doing things. I like the people. I like our tribe. I yeah. want to call it a tribe, mm-hmm. right? Um, I know a lot of people are using gang and all that other shit. Like, <laughs> oh I, I'm not a thug. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you don't know. Like, I will Jason Derulo a nigga, but I'm not a thug, right? And I don't think Jason Derulo is a thug either. But I like the fact that we do have, like, a real fucking tribe and a real loyal listenership. And we don't have to do the antics. Like, I don't have to bring a Instagram thought on here. And, and when I say thought, nah, I mean that disrespectfully. I was gonna say respectfully. I mean that disrespect. When I say Instagram, but don't thought, sleep like, on don't sleep on that though because Adam Twenty Two be having like not that I'm saying their Instagram thoughts, no, but he be, he be having like OnlyFans women, and those interviews are so entertaining. It's a market. Honestly. It's dope. No, but it's like a good ass interview. Like I appreciated it. Everybody has their lane. You yeah, know what exactly. I'm saying? And I exactly. feel like this is and this is what I was getting to. I feel like. We are true to who we are where we don't have to do that. Yeah. Like, that is who Adam is. He fucks on camera for, like, a living. Well, part-time, because he doesn't do that for a living. But he fucks on camera, so he's mm-hmm. clearly comfortable with that kind of energy, with those kind of personalities, with that audience. Mm-hmm. Me, like, if I were to bring somebody on who is a little bit more promiscuous or a sex worker or anything like that, the only reason I would do it is because, one, I'm really interested in them mm-hmm. and their story. Or, two, because, like, we just wanted to kind of have that conversation. I don't feel like I have to do it yeah. to bring eyeballs to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Because the way that we're building this shit brick by brick is like, all right, cool. This is working. And whoever's here is here. And whoever's not is not. And if you go back and listen to our last episode of last year, I was talking to the fucking haters, Reggie. The people who left us. Mm. Who left us? I don't fucking know. Nobody left us. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Nisa like, went through a whole transition. Everybody <laughs> stuck with us, Savon. Mm. They did. They, they they did indeed. They did indeed. And I am so forever fucking grateful for that. I think at this time, um, because we do have a lot that we could talk about. Ooh. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, my goodness. I did a thing. What you do? Yo, Armand, I don't think you're over there yet. I got to get you over there. Over where? Leaving you either. Uh-oh. What's going on? Am I over there? You over there? Okay, okay. I don't know where. I don't know what he's referring to. No, you to, there? You okay, there. I, I'm there. Yes, yeah. I'm. I'm her. I made a finsta. Oh, oh shit! Oh yeah, you bitches don't know about his finsta. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. 
I made a fence. Wait, why are you saying this on air? That's not the point, Savon. You gotta, you have to be discreet with it. it Why are you announcing on our popular podcast? Because it's private. They can't get in my shit anyway. Okay, that's true. It's like the club, honestly. So it is. I put like a twenty-four hour notice for like, yo, you got twenty-four hours to get in. If you don't get in, you don't get accepted. Left at the door. So now. I got like a bevy of people waiting at the line to get into my fenster and you can't get in. Mm. Like it's clipped, but I made a fenster and you gotta be punctual. I wanna let you know it has done wonders for my mental health. Yeah, you just I'm you sure. just like people can't post anymore on Instagram. Let me not speak for everybody, but mostly like they have to think before they post. But on Finsta, like my friends and I, we all had Finsta's back in college, but now it kinda like dwindled down because all of us just use our close friends now. Mm-hmm. But with Finsta, you could just let your thoughts off. You could write paragraphs and it's your close friends, so they care. So they're like commenting, be like, Oh, what you going through, bitch? Yeah. 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 And I don't care about like the follower ratio. Yeah. Like I'm a slave to this social media shit, yo. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are ready to admit that to yourselves. But well, I'll not. be the first to admit it. I'm not. I'm a slave. Like, I, I can delete my Instagram right now. It's, it's I, 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 I like. can't. I, I, I will admit I can't. You, you I've can't had what? social media since I was, I want to say Born. 13. Yeah, like, it's been <laughs> years. Social I don't, media was like I the pacifier. I haven't, I haven't seen a life without it type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 you were 13 in 2016. That's crazy. No. I was in fucking college. Bro, I, I was. We were doing shit. summer sixteen. Oh my god, I'm old. What? How old were you in 2012? That's the year I graduated. In 2012, I was nine. You nine? Was nine. Yeah, that's nuts, Minutes. dude. I graduated 2012. I was oh, 17 god. that year. Look at that. You were grown. Your youth is beautiful. Shout <laughs> so, out to you. So <laughs> uh, let's 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 like kind of pick your brain a little bit because, yeah. like I said, I know that I'm a slave to it. I wake up and I'm scrolling. Mm-hmm. And then I got to stop myself and then I'm checking for notifications because I'm constantly used to notifications because I have a decent following and he I, got, is him. I have like, you know, I have He's an IG engaged. Baddie. I, decent following. I have so Yvonne engaged. be going viral. Like he gets Regularly. like 10K views on a real minimum. He goes viral on his funny yeah. tweets, his positive tweets, uh, yeah. his ins- inspirational tweets. You, 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 you the man. You, brother. You the man. I appreciate it. Shout out to Rob. That's my ghostwriter. Oh, yeah. Rob, Rob, <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> when I say go, he cuts the clips. So Rob does oh. our clips. And he's gotten like our biggest clip on Instagram. But um, Mm -hmm. I know like my relationship with social media, I got to kind of take a step back because I kind of put unrealistic expectations on myself. Um, I'm looking, I'm constantly comparing, I'm constantly Mm -hmm. trying to find ways. And like I said, I'm, I'm I'm equipped and I'm accustomed to receiving notifications, which is fucking bad. That is bad. It's bad. And my notifications are off. Mm -hmm. Oh, but just to refresh like all right i should probably receive a like here or i got an instagram fucking request or somebody's retweeting me over here so i had to kind of dive back right and i feel like a fucking crackhead because i couldn't just do it cold turkey i had to make a finsta uh-huh. and that finsta i have no expectations because i only follow fucking 40 people over there you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. i don't expect that constant engagement that constant traffic it's like all right cool i have 40 people over here i'm gonna <laughs> post what i'm gonna post mind you i don't want y'all to like my picture <laughs> on my finster i just want you to see my thoughts mm-hmm. just so you know i'm still here i'm not dead i'm not fucking ghost or anything like that like i just want you to all know that i exist and i'm existing with the kind of freedom that i haven't been able to do because i feel like life has been uh I, I won't say a microscope but somewhat of a microscope because yeah. i've been working next to a public figure for so fucking long yeah, of course you feel me um but leavings back to you you said you kind of grew up with social media what's that situation like with you because we've heard stories of devon terrell telling you like bro mm-hmm. you are in the matrix yeah he would he'll, he'll tell me he'll see me put my phone down mm-hmm. and then pick it up 30 40 seconds later you know what i mean i just I've like I said I've never seen a life without the internet, let alone without um, social media. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll just constantly catch myself, just you know what I mean, refreshing. And I don't even post like that. I'm just you don't feeding myself all of a bunch of bullshit. And I've been trying to work on that for myself, um, Mm -hmm. as far as just Mm -hmm. putting my phone down, uh, turning on Do Not Disturb, Mm -hmm. and really just not touching my phone. Do you ever experience FOMO? Uh, yeah. I want to say, yeah. Yeah. I think that is a cheat code to like letting social media go because, like, to me, if I don't go out somewhere, I never get FOMO because I'm like, yo, I'd rather be at home anyway. So that, so that I don't need to tap into people's stories and stuff. But I think, I think it's this is a generalization, but, um, 
I think it comes with age. Because yes. as I'm getting older, I don't give a fuck. Like, I really, like, I don't know. I, I think it comes with age. Do you guys agree or no? 100%. Is that too... Two, three years ago, FOMO was real for me. Mm-hmm. I think, as of now, I'm so okay missing something. Checking the stories. being like, oh, that looks fun. But I'm good. I, I don't need to be there. Mm. Like, there's, there's never been a moment where I've like been crippled by like damn i should have been at that thing like it, mm-hmm. it just doesn't exist for me anymore because there's so many things nowadays especially now like i mean not now with omicron but like when the original pandemic ended uh, not ended but like things started to chill out vaccinations phase one people we're, were having pandemic, events Armand. i was going to mad <laughs> events yeah and because yeah, i felt like outside. i had to and it was it was a lot on me mm-hmm. so i started to miss shit and then check it just to see how it was and then think I was and you're like, like oh, Yo. I'm good. Yeah, I was yeah. like, a- a- am I okay missing this thing? I'm like, yes, I am okay missing this thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I-, I think age is a big thing, or just also just the-, the the life that like I feel like Reggie and I live, where we go to a lot of different events. We have so many different friends who are doing different shit. Saying, Yo, come here, come here, come here. You do it all. You you have a blast. Mm-hmm. Like I- absolutely, I still like to have fun now. But it's just like you ha- also have to recognize as a person, like your battery needs to recharge sometimes, and that means mm-hmm. missing something and being mm-hmm. okay with it. And I'm I'm okay with that. I so. think we kind of like because these guys because you guys have we've gotten close this year, but mm-hmm. Armand has known me. Like I, I feel like I've been through it. Like the whole 2019 was my year where I was going everywhere every weekend and now when i say on the podcast like guys like i'm not really outside like that they don't believe me but i feel like i'm kind of over it now i used to go to every listening session every open bar but now i kind of say no to a lot of things Mm -hmm. and it just came 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 with age you've lived a lot of life for a 25 year old i have (laughs) i I have like you've probably lived 30 years within your 25 years yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of over it yo i'm kind of over it i'd rather stay home and just eat crab legs and shit. Just eat crab legs. Yes. And shit. By the way, Levis, do you think like if you ha- if we challenged you to like not be on social media for like thirty days, do you think you could do it? Don't lie. For thirty days or not? Yes. I can't do it. You can't do can't it. Do you can't do it. I, I promise you, I would. You say can't do it. Yo, I could look thirty to, days. Yes, I could look to God and be like, I know I could do it. I, I I don't give a fuck. Like I do posts and stuff, but it's not that serious to me. Like I. Could, but it's not just about posting. See me. I'm not uh, much of a poster either. You're not. Post yeah. and go. I'm not. I'm not that much of a poster either. Like post once in a while, mm-hmm. I'll post. Like if I really want to break the gram, if I want to show some legs or some shit like that, maybe <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Not like, the thighs. Maybe yeah. Maybe if I want to pull up my, my my shorts a little bit, but no, I'm not really. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Yo, this don't is act a sick like Negro. I, don't act like I didn't break the internet. That no, no, no. Because um, that one time when I was giving him a little leg, I was watching one of our old episodes, mm-hmm. and like you be like in the summer. Like the men be wearing like shorts, I'd be like, "Wow!" Yeah. Like we used to like wear shorts. We'll like, it's so different them. now. Like, look at the artwork. I'm still <laughs> serving on the artwork, my nigga. Like we be like, serving. I was look at the legs. Look at the legs, yo, Pierre. Look at the legs. Zoom in on the legs. The legs is there still. Like if it's, you're watching on Apple or if you're watching on Spotify, however you're watching, like the leg work is there. Me mm-hmm. and Alex together combined, mm-hmm. like we are serving shit. <laughs> <laughs> what about them? People don't look at Alex's legs though because he got the beard. Like, oh, his beard just code. is yeah. captivating. Cheat code. Yeah. Wait, oh, wait, oh, what was it? Alex? Alex, I know Alex can delete social media for thirty days easily. Easily, He's, yeah. I could tell. Alex is except like for that. Fridays. Every Friday he'll log in. <laughs> you could just do it for, Yo, for from the need I'll to be know honest, page. And maybe you don't think so? This is a conversation. Maybe we got to have when Dev and Alex pull back up. I don't think any of us can delete social media completely for thirty days. If I had nah, to bet, I I, I'd bet on I think if there's I feel anyone, like, it will be Alex. I mm-hmm. think if there's anyone, it'd be Dove. Oh, Dev has done it before. Dev, Remember, Dev has my vote. He's taken a hiatus before. And I'll be looking like he really does not. He does not scroll. Whatever first on mm-hmm. Instagram when you open it up, that's all he's gonna see. Yeah. That's, that's why he don't like. And also, shit. he's oh. older than us. Oh. Yeah. It comes with age. That's true. This nigga's a. He's like sixty-seven. right? That's yeah, Dev don't be liking my shit. <laughs> That's why he don't like none of my shit. Yo, he followed my burner. I was like, oh, oh, Dev, I'm sorry. Oh, I was, yo, I'm like, oh shit, I got two blue check niggas in the club. You and Devon <laughs> Terrell. I was really like, because I just put it out there. I said, you know what? Let me just say, hey, this is it. This is where I'm at. You could catch me who you catch me. Mind you, I did it to my close friends. Mm-hmm. So you probably seen, you might have just scrolled. Too. Yeah, 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 you probably just scrolled by my shit, but it's all good, bro. I still love you. It's another person. Uh, <laughs> <It's another nah. laughs> but I just put it in my close friends. I said, look, this is where you can find me. This is where I'm at. I'm and never, he actually followed you? I'm never promoting this page again. And like, to my surprise, Dev followed. Dev followed. That means Dev watched your story. He'd be you, watching your story. You follow. Dev never watched my stories. And Alex, <laughs> mm-hmm. I was surprised. The funny thing about Alex is, 
And I can't wait. Actually, we're going to give them a call in a little bit. Oh, shit. But I, I had, like, took the post down because I'm like, you know what? The club is closed. If you got in, you got in. If you didn't, you didn't. It's no hard feelings. Like, whoever was in the club, like, yeah, you cool. Leaving. I'm going to let you in. Don't worry, little man. <laughs> My boy, I got you. Don't worry. You in the club. But I was just like, all right, anybody who didn't get in, that's cool. But then, like, 24 hours later. So I don't know if Alex, like... Memorize my burner account Or if he screenshot it It was like yo I'm too cool to follow This nigga on the first day I'm gonna hit him back In like 24 right <laughs> And then he followed me The next day I was like oh shit Alex is in the club too uh, But actually Let's let's check on our guys man I, I don't really know What's going on with them We will call Devon Terrell first And Here we go. You, you He's gonna see my number But I want Levens to just Navigate the conversation let them know. OG. Let them know. Yeah, just let them know that you're on the pod, and 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 let's hear his response if he even picks up. Yo, Hello? yo, yo. What's good? What's going on? You good? Yeah. Why is I'm getting a phone call from? It says save on, but I feel like I hear leaving. Yeah, because you took the day off. It's my job now. <laughs> yo, yo, you value your life? <laughs> yo, he's uh, he's uh, sitting in your not, seat. It's not, funny. it's not funny. Yo, you value your life? <laughs> he's sitting in your seat, Dev. He's in my seat. Y'all niggas betrayed me like that. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo we, we, we wanted to represent you in the best of light, so we felt like the, the, the closest person to you would be Phone Man, man. My nigga, his name is Levin's Gene. You let a nigga named Levin's Gene sit in my seat, bro. I would love to say your government. That is the government. worst name I've ever... You let this nigga sit in my seat. <laughs> Devon Terrell, what's going on, man? We here on the Need to Know podcast, bro. And we wanted to just tap in with you uh, and, and let you kind of just speak to the people a little bit. Levin's is here, by the way. And he's holding it down. He's representing you the right way, OG. <laughs> Levin's you is did garbage. Well. I don't know why I... I mean, he could say it all the night. He is garbage. He's pure bull. He's garbage. Oh, my he's God. Bad person, and he's just a bad person. I he I would just argue with him just before we this whole thing started. That's so he's a liar. He's a liar. That's a lie. See he's what I liar. mean by how he gets him so riled up? Like he didn't even I say didn't anything. Say a word. He ruins my day every day. He ruins it. We every get day. We, we we gave him a new nickname. Well, I did what, at least. What is it? His, what his is, nickname is, is the Puppet Master mm -hmm. the because puppet master? he has your emotions on a fucking string, Dev. Get it together, bro. Why does he trigger you this way? Ah, fuck him. I <laughs> fuck him. Who cares? Fuck him. Um, I don't like him. Yeah, I, I don't fuck with him. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I really wanted to call and tap in which I'm going to call Alex after this, but um, I, okay. I heard that your, your song, Home Wrecker, was played on the Joe Budden podcast, which is obviously a huge, huge, huge fucking platform. Mm -hmm. uh, Hell Levin's yeah. helped you with that. Uh, can what? I please? Can I, can I please? No, he helped on the song. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you were saying he helped me get it on the Joe Budden network. <laughs> Not the what? Like he's, he's spreading lies. <laughs> no. Why does he do this? Lee, Lee nah, was a producer he did. He on that song. Yes. Your vocals, yes. your song right in. So I just wanted to congratulate you on that because I know, you know, for any artist, anybody who's listening, anybody who is kind of, you know, working in music, period, something like that is a dope look. So That's I just wanted to look. salute no, you on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Lee Vince, all jokes aside, I love Lee Vince's death. He, um, he definitely did help me with that record. That was a while ago that we did that. And um, man, that was great. That's such a great way to start the year for me personally, especially starting to roll out some new music you know coming this month and stuff so that just felt amazing and i appreciate all y'all like you know what i mean for everything and just you know i don't think i would be on that radar of joe and that podcast without y'all so i appreciate everybody nah, you're the man it, it was dope to hear we also got our guy armand from uh the stay busy podcast here as well Yo, What's good, armand, my brother? don't believe nothing leaving says okay <laughs> he's a liar you hear me he's a liar he's a liar armand you're bonding yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm glad, honestly, this uh, relationship comes to fruition on the podcast because I introduced Levens as your young That's bull right. and you are the OG. Like, listen to the top of this podcast, bro. We give you a lot of respect. Like, I don't want no smoke. No smoke. We I don't have him no, on no, camera. No. He's not on I camera. It. That's good. Keep him away. That's good. <laughs> don't want to see your face. But then I appreciate, I appreciate it. He's like, you know, he... um. I actually met Levens, I say really the day we started really connecting and getting like, you know, working more was the day I met him at the podcast at this at the need to know. Remember, we both were mm -hmm. guests. 
Yeah. But yeah, I swapped them out and that was it. And that was the first time I was like, yo, what's up, man? Like, what's going on? And then we just kind of connected from there. So wow. really? that was like the first time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. It, like, I didn't the know podcast. Oh, I thought you guys that were was, like childhood. That was the first time we met, but that was the first time we like started working. Really? Yeah, started working. Yeah, that, that had him take working. me serious. And yeah, I could. What? I could, what? Yeah, I did not what know that. I've never. I've never. Just now tell. Give us credit. No, I thought you guys were like family friends. Like, I was a fan. I was a fan of his for years. But yeah, that. The podcast made him take me serious because it made him like he was in the room, so he sat down. Yeah, he's never yeah, heard my yeah, story. He he's never heard like, oh, who I worked up? with and everything. Really? So that take, yeah, that That's is fucking awesome. I'll give y'all a quick story, and I'll be a, a completely <laughs> transparent. So okay. Levens, right? So we used to have this application in this way that we had, you know, guests come on the pod, and Levens was uh-huh. one of those people. And obviously, you know, Alex, he keeps his ear to the street, so he right. knows who's popping before who's popping, right? Fact. So he said, "Yo." Oh, Savon, you know, we got this young kid. He's a super dope producer. He wants to come on the pod. And I looked at him. I said, how old is he? And he said, yeah, he was born in 2003. And I said, no. <laughs> that no. is so ageist. And I was like, nah, dog. He can't nah. talk. What is he going to say? And then he was like, bro, he's coming on the pod. And then I said, you know what? You the one with the beard in this friendship. Mm-hmm. That's right. So you could, you got it, dog. Beard like rules. You could take this, right? And, and then when Levis came, you know, obviously I heard his work and everything. And I was right. like, yo, this kid is going to be a superstar. But I had right. thought that the two of you were really uh-huh. close. So to hear that kind of story and how everything kind of came together, I'm glad that we were able to be, even if it was just a small slither enough, of, you big. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm super grateful to, to know that. That's kind of crazy. That was me because on that podcast, I had to hear his like what he was working on. Yeah. And when, when I found out, when I real, you know, I knew he was like 16 years old. But when he told me, yeah, I'm, I'm about to do six al- six records in Shit. six different weeks. Six projects. Or yeah. something, six projects. Yeah. And I was like, what? I was like, I know grown ass men that can't get a song out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So for me to hear a kid, and that's how I separate the weak from mm-hmm. the um from the strong when it comes to this music shit. Word. You can spot a bullshit or real fast by his discography. Like how mm-hmm. much songs you got out, how many projects you got out. So for him to be 16 and get to six projects, like in a, in a span of time that let me yeah. know like, oh, he's really, he got it. Like he has mm-hmm. it. So yeah, I think that, that same, that was a big, just hearing that on the podcast, that was big. We filmed on a Wednesday. I feel like that same Saturday, it was me, Alex and Devon. We got in the studio. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Oh, that's right. Yeah, immediately. I, so, I saw it. I was like, yeah, for sure. So uh, I'll let you go, but I do got to ask before we kind of wrap up this phone call. Does uh-huh. that make Levens your little bow wow to Jermaine oh Dupree? Oh, my God. That's <laughs> it, so pretty much. Gross. Is he like gross. the Shad <laughs> Moss of producers? Was, and no, you're Jermaine Dupree? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> I am not sleeping with Janet Jackson. I'm not. I don't have any of those things. That's not what's happening here. You fucking. Okay, all right, man. I, I, I'm watching you. <laughs> well, we can't Shad wait to we, we we can't wait to have you back on the pod, man. We miss your presence, your energy, your insight, and all of the wisdom that you do. If you do listen to the top of this podcast too, I hope I did you proud on how we promoted HMD. Just mm-hmm. to give you a heads up, now he did well. Oh, he did I'm well. hype because I did I did mm-hmm. I did you I did right when I when you was the see. Yeah. Like, yo, I told the listeners, so I got that, yeah. you. I told mm-hmm. them like, yo, y'all really looked out. So, uh, yeah, man. And get you know uh we'll we'll be back in the studio next week we'll tap back in big facts and yep. i'm glad that you guys um damn i forgot what i was gonna say it's kind of weird being a phone call person because i feel like <laughs> i'm sitting there in my mind but i'm yeah. not <laughs> shit weird but y'all enjoy yourselves have fun Indeed. and um leave it i hate you my nigga yo 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 yo, yo, yo. It's, it's almost bedtime old man just all right take your sleeping pills make sure you call take your vitamins night. Call it a All night. good, you bum ass nigga. Go squint, go squint in your, go squint your workout young, picture. You youth humble. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> real humble. Oh, oh wait, real quick, yeah, yo, your damn, damn. picture. Damn. What? I, what? Thank you, bro. Thank you, oh, man. Yo, oh, one clap it up, please, please. Drew don't even know what he's clapping it up <laughs> yeah. for, but he be clapping it up. Yo, that's my nigga, bro. Yeah. Drew's my nigga, bro. Yo, you follow my fenster, dog. Yeah. I'm Dang. a real nigga, bro. That's fire. I'm a, I'm a real nigga. Nah, Yo, you Reggie, are. don't don't let him off the hook with that whole the, with that shit that he, he he going through. Don't <laughs> let him off the hook. Make him talk about it. Make Wait. him express himself. We'll we'll do that next week, Dev. You're my therapist. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, you good, baby. You he good. did. He did. He checked in on me. I appreciate it. I, I checked appreciate it. Yeah, it. for sure. Thank you. All good. But y'all enjoy yourselves. Drew. Also, last thing I want to say, Drew actually plays the piano. Amazing. Really I well. What is wrong with day. you, man? That pissed me off. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all go. So yeah, really well. Yo, this is like the second. This is the third time. I mean, this what is he supposed to do? Just like come and play piano right here. Reggie, Reggie did it first, right? Reggie played well. 
And then that same day, I found out Pierre plays guitar. Ama- like, <gasps> the fuck? And then <laughs> we all. see a video of Drew playing keys. Like, yeah, I don't trust none of y'all. I don't trust none of yeah. y'all. It's an overwhelming uh, amount of talent in this studio. Dev, thank you, my brother. Again, we'll tap no back in next week. Um, sure. and, and yeah, man, be safe. No doubt. Leave in. You ugly, bro. Love you. And you old, my nigga. All right. <laughs> later, <y'all>. All right. <laughs> Do y'all think we'll have luck uh, calling Alex? I doubt it. I, feel I don't like know. <laughs> What's the over <laughs> under? What's the uh, over? You might have to call him twice because he might be on DMV. No, I feel like he yeah. would answer your phone call. You think so? Yeah. I think he's going to get two rings. Are you an emergency bypass friend for him? You, y'all, y'all don't you emergency know, I bypass. I will be honest. Right? I'm, I'm going to be a thousand percent honest. I think I have like a 90% chance like mm-hmm. Alex yeah, no, normally I know. picks up he normally picks up but this the these are peak hours how right? many rings peak, uh, peak nah, hours? It's, it's normally it's not leak no. okay got it i was just checking i, I pray he's not leaking. i was just yeah, checking the temperature checking over the temperature. over under two how many if, rings if he's it's gonna leaking, take two calls when i call him i'm never serving him cmos again <laughs> <laughs> like clearly it's affecting your body too good you're gonna clog the leak yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm gonna clear <laughs> nah i'm not gonna clog. somebody gonna clog it <laughs> clog somebody gonna clog his leak. leak it ain't gonna be me let's 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 give my guy a call man let's see if he picks up y'all think he'll pick up yes i think it's gonna take two or two calls because he might be this on is, dnd this is the second Second ring. Okay. He's probably like, eh, this bitch ass nigga calling me about some business. <laughs> Alex. He hates us. The people are waiting on you. I don't think he's going to pick up, guys. It would be mad funny because we always make fun of him for like for ignoring <laughs> us. <laughs> but now. So now live, yeah, like, here Please on the podcast. Here on the podcast. Oh, we should let him a voice note. Yo, well, people don't I, I leave voice his, notes I didn't anymore. want his number to be said. Because yeah. please leave a message. Oh, that's for smart. Because I would have let that shit play. Four, three, three, whatever. Like, I don't, people I don't, don't leave do voice notes anymore. I mean, voicemails. You're showing your age, Reggie. No, we got voice notes in the text message. You were born in I'm 2003. Kidding, kidding, I don't care. But yeah, we got voice notes in the I'm text message. Over that. No, no, voicemail. Do you know what a voicemail is? Yes, I know. You sure? You sure? No, because when people don't answer, they used to do this thing, us oldies. We used to just be like, hey, was just giving you a Oh, miss you and people don't do that anymore the like only that people would, that do it are the car insurance people for i feel me. like that would get me tight or your parents no it's parents cute one voice note because you mad thirsty if you leaving a voice no <laughs> yeah. Man. Wait till I call you back. Savon, if you left me a voice note, like hey reg was just checking i'll be like oh Savon, I'll, I'll just you text you like you're <laughs> it's <laughs> me no. again I'm sorry i'm a sentimental <laughs> bitch okay <laughs> um yeah so i don't know if y'all know Oh because gosh. I kind of why you say oh my god when you whenever crazy. you pause like no, that no, no, I just no, never no, know no. what you're it's, gonna say next. It's nothing crazy, Scary honestly. I, I think I kind of and you may be familiar with it, Armand. I'm not too sure, um, but th- it seems to be a trend of podcasts just kind of breaking up, right? And there was another podcast that broke up recently. I know Pierre. Me and Pierre had discussions about this podcast, um, and I think I spoke about it on our show, which is the I Am Athlete podcast. Yeah, are you familiar? I don't um, watch regularly, but I, I've seen episodes. There's another part they broke up, man. Yep. Yeah. They, they fucking departed, and it gave me remnants of the Joe, Rory, and Maul breakup. Because that was the biggest one in the podcast world, let's be honest. That was the biggest one, It right? was, yeah. Easily. Mm-hmm. But that, Uncle yeah. Murder shouted them that out. And, um, um, the call her daddy. I feel like those call two, her daddy was really big. Really Joe big Rogan's ones, pretty yeah. big too. Yeah, but as far as like podcasts, like breaking up and splitting and all that other stuff, it it, it kind of made me just reflect on like um, I guess friendships and business, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's almost it's an unspoken word. Like when everything's good, but. Is it really a thing? Does it really affect things? Like you have a podcast. You have two podcasts, actually, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You have two podcasts. Um, you're a phenomenal writer. Thank you. Um, and you work with a bevy of different people. Mm-hmm. So how do you kind of manage? Like you know what? This is my guy, and we have this amazing podcast. Mm-hmm. We have this amazing product, but we kind of got to make sure we keep things in its own lane. Because Nick is your guy. Nick like is that's my like best your friend, brother. Yeah, my and like they're they're like running, stay busy together. It's different from me. I'm sorry, I'm gonna let you answer, but like oh, sure. it's it's like. Me and Armand both being writers, that's totally different from Armand and Nick running a brand together. So yeah. how do you guys navigate that? Yeah, um, I mean, there are pros and cons. The pros is that we have s- almost eight years now of a friendship relationship to where 
we are able to we just know like nick knows when i'm off like well we'll get off a of zoom and he'll hit me like are you good Aww. or i'll know when nick is not fully tapped in and we can just check in um mm-hmm. but on the flip side like admittedly there are times where our friendship lets us get kind of comfortable and like i don't know how to put it like we kind of get comfortable and it's kind of just like because we're so close something doesn't happen like it, it'll be like oh it's, it's whatever but it's not whatever because mm-hmm. like this thing needs to get done and so there are times where and i'm i'm not a confrontational person mm-hmm. like are you really yeah like oh. i've I, I feel like throughout my life as i reflect on it, i've kind of been a pushover i just kind of let shit go and the mm-hmm. times where Aww, i've been friend. strict or confrontational i feel like an asshole so I i'm trying to establish that balance really? where, where mm-hmm. i can be firm with someone without Even, coming but, off rude with that deep ass voice <laughs> <laughs> like you i feel like your voice all you have just, to do is call me like yo why the fuck <laughs> didn't you do this just say in the deepest tone like the baritone of your your, your gut your core your yeah. diaphragm mm. just call somebody a bitch ass nigga well, it's tough. <laughs> just say it. don't do that our like is a very nice guy we would yeah, all be like oh shit i don't want to fuck with him no because yeah. i know i get what you're saying about mm-hmm. the we're too comfortable because yeah. For example, like Savon and I, we met on like a not business, but we were working together. Like yeah. that was the basis of our um, us meeting and just growing our relationship. So now we're real life friends. Like I could, I feel like I could call him like when I'm going through something. But at the core of it, he, we're still coworkers. Like yeah. so, when you need to schedule shit, mm-hmm. he's he, we're still talking to each other in like a oh like a like a profession a kind of a professional yeah. tone. Mm-hmm. Whereas you, your best friend is Nick. Is that what you were kind of saying? Yeah. Like, oh, sometimes you lose that because yeah. we're real life. Friends. I don't, I don't, I don't ever want to like feel like I'm like bossing up on him or mm-hmm. like being disrespectful or whatever. And also throughout mm-hmm. my life, just to get a little vulnerable here, like I've been told or kind of like made fun of for being in touch with my emotions, being sensitive. Mm-hmm. Like if I express an issue and maybe it's because of how I expressed it. Cause you gotta, you know, look at yourself and how you do things. Like mm-hmm. maybe it's because of how I express myself, but because I've been told that I'm emotional or sensitive, I don't like expressing my issues with something. And mm-hmm. it might not even be a big issue. Maybe it's small. If it's small, I'll be like, Oh, whatever. It's fine. But when it's something big, it's like, I really spent a lot of time thinking about how I'm going to bring it up. Mm-hmm. Cause I want it to be received the best. I don't ever want the purpose of the message to get lost and how the message is delivered. Mm -hmm. And with someone who I'm so close to, sometimes because we're so in sync sometimes, sometimes I'm just like, Nick should just know this thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thankfully, like, Mm -hmm. because, you know, admittedly, the podcast is great. I love it. Stay Busy is awesome. But we've definitely had some some rocky times. This is natural in in, in creation. It gets frustrating, yeah. Yeah, like, like, it's it's just natural when you create something you're so passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, And there have been moments I'm like, damn, like, I thought Nick would just know, but yeah. he doesn't. Now that's communication. That's yeah. how. That's yeah. why everybody says communication is the most important in relationships because like people aren't like mind readers. Exactly. So, but I know it's hard. Like, yeah, it's hard. But I'm glad you brought up like how people used to make fun of you, like that you were in t- quote unquote in touch with your in touch with your emotions. Yeah. But that just like a little tangent, but sure. related. Like I have always hated that because it's like. The bitches that need a man who are in touch with their emotions are the first. They need that. Like, Mm -hmm. they need that in their life. But they're the first to, like, make fun of men who are sensitive. I'm like, bitch, you need that. Like, And then they also, like, equate that with how masculine you are. And I hate that because I'm like, okay, so me, I love nice, sweet, like, sensitive men. I love that. But that doesn't mean that I don't like masculine men. Like mm-hmm. they're both, like my boyfriend, he's very like intu- intuitive, like very calm, nice, but he's very like masculine. He's very tough, makes decisions. So like, I feel like, especially women feel like that can't exist. And I just always had a problem with that. Yeah. But yeah, that's People what made struggle me with duality of. so much. They yeah. think it's extreme left or extreme right. It's like, no, there's area in the middle for someone to be both things, to mm-hmm. be a hybrid of both things. Um, so yeah, now it's tough when the friendship comes first and then you put business into it um you know like money money just makes things so complicated like you know oh yeah i know i know rory said during the whole breakup like money makes you more of who you are Mm -hmm. for some people believe that some people think money just is guaranteed to mess things up Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and you know we we, uh, we obviously want to make our thing very very profitable but i think just the conversations and the accountability that we've had for one another and Kieran, our VP, of course, too. Like, I, th- I don't think we'll ever get to a point where money will change us because we, we all started this shit together. We got it out the mud. So, like, mm-hmm. yeah. But well, it's, 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 it's definitely yeah. a, a fear, though. I Armand, think, are, what's up? Are you my OG? 
What do you mean? Yo, you, like you want to know something? I, now I, that Dev like, is not here, I can say something. You guys are both cancers. So I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh no, no, no. On top, we're both cancers, both Haitian. I feel like he just spoke. <laughs> we're both Haitian. We're both Haitian. Nah, he just spoke on my behalf. It feels like because everything yes. he just said, I relate to 100. percent yeah. As far Aww. as working alongside my best friend, um, mm-hmm. my guy V, I do music with, having trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just take the L most of the time whenever it comes down to you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When the business get rocky and you don't That's want dumb. the friendship to kind of get rocky, so I'll take the L most of the times. Um, well, now I'm starting to, you know what I mean, work on that. But damn, being emotional, damn, bro, you know, <laughs> man, yeah, it was a great well, connection. I think, I think one of the things, right, and I'm, I'm a big believer in like the silver lining of things. Of course, right? you have to. So on my Finsta, <laughs> <laughs> you really just promoting the yeah, shit yeah, yeah, out of your shit. Finsta. This is my shit. Y'all niggas can't get in the club. But on my Finsta, one of the first things that I uh, I kind of posted was the yin yang symbol, right? Mm-hmm. Because that yin yang symbol to me when I was younger, it just looked really fucking cool. Yeah. Like whoever came up with that simple ass concept, it's like, damn, that is the coolest thing ever. When I was a kid, right? I didn't know what it meant. I just had an affinity for this black and white symbol. Yeah. But then when you get older and you realize, oh, wait, so it represents the uh, everybody's who's good has a little bit of bad and anybody who's bad has a little bit of good and balance. And, you know, whatever you take from that symbol, you can kind of make it your own, but it still has that same, you know, kind of notion of what it means, right? Yeah. And so for me, I think the silver lining in that whole Joe, Rory, and Maul thing was that although... You know, for some people, for some of the consumers, some of the fans, it kind of sucked, right, to see it come to an end, to see people who are a part of their lives, you know, me being a part of that shit, um, knowing, like, the impact that it had on people. Like, I remember doing meet and greets with these podcasters, and again, like, we're podcasters, we're not not singers, actors, dancers, anything, but I, I remember, excuse me, the emotion that they invoked in people, the emotion that people really felt like, yo, these are my friends. These are my people. Um, and, and to see that kind of up close and to know that it came to an end, for whatever reason that it came to an end, I feel like it kind of taught everybody who was uh, tapped in on that situation. It taught everybody a lesson, yeah. right? Me and Alex have never had to have a conversation about it, but it's always been an unspoken thing to where he and I knows, bro, there's not a, nothing that we will allowed to compromise our mission you know what i'm saying yeah. our friendship our brotherhood mm-hmm. like we can't especially if it's over money yeah so any any dollar that goes in or out he can see and i can see yeah there's nobody there's not a single password that he don't got that i don't got you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying like we kind of just keep it open to an open forum because we've been blessed to see the demise of something over, you know, whatever it was over. Yeah. So um, I, I think going back to that point of just friendship and business, it's a slippery slope, mm-hmm. right? And leaving you being so young and going through it and, you know, having your friends and your team and, you know, there's going to be people uh, along your journey as somebody who is is thriving, right? Like we have a <laughs> we have a joke off air about Levens being the most industry person like <laughs> he is. how is there a kid I'm that is born not. in 2003 no no <laughs> I embrace him like Re- yes, have that title Reggie's Reggie's I, mean, I, I don't fight it Reggie no. don't want it's to throw like no more <laughs> 2003 this kid is so young but he's he's so established and you know us calling you industry like you know it, it's a, it's a compliment and it's a testament to the work that you've put in and kind of just your, your work ethic and your trajectory and where you're going to go, right? So we we have these jokes, but along your journey, you're going to come across some of those things. Obviously, again, this podcast had to pivot. Uh, the podcast that I started this whole conversation with, I Am Athlete, um, <laughs> the guys who left, Fred Taylor and Channing, uh, and, and, uh, Channing Crowder, those two guys, they left the podcast that they were on and they literally named their podcast The Pivot. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is the name of their podcast, yeah, right? So to sometimes you're gonna have to just pivot in, in ways that you don't even think about because it's just a part of your journey. And yeah. and you know, it, it was nice to see that it was an amicable split between the those three, which sure. is Brandon Marshall, Fred Taylor, and uh Channing Crowder. You know, they they seem to be on good terms. And who knows what it comes down to. Like for me, I'm always gonna believe when there's some kind of breakup in that way, it has to come down to differences, but also money business right and you know we as a community 
we don't really like to say the word the M word, which is money. Yeah. So we say business, mm -hmm. right? We mm -hmm. have difference in business, right? Nobody wants to say, "Nigga, give me my money." <laughs> like, it just doesn't happen that way. So uh, they they said, you know, the business was different, and you know, we could all kind of slice that up however we want, leave it for interpretation. Um, but it's just kind of sad to see another podcast that I really fucked with people that I look forward to hearing from a collective, an energy that I look forward to hearing from, kind of split. That's yeah. that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah, we're never breaking up. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we're gonna get married yeah, together yeah, yeah, yeah. forever. <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna play best part at our wedding. <laughs> we're, 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 <laughs> we're gonna get tats. Uh, Armand, I want to go back to because a lot of people who don't know who may not be familiar with you and your podcast and your story. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that I got to learn about you over the last few years and leaving. So this is a conversation for both of you guys, and we could kind of tackle both it however the we want. Cancers. Yeah. <laughs> the Haitian cancers. Yeah. Haitian cancers. Y'all niggas is a gang. <laughs> what is that? Y'all are fucking oh. gang in this mother. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Big zone. Uh, but I, 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 <laughs> I want to kind of go back to something that you had mentioned when sure. you were speaking about the business and running the podcast with your friend. Um, you said that you were really tapped in with your emotions. Yeah. Right? And I've always known you, not always, but over the years, I've known you to be tapped in with R&B music, mm -hmm. right? So you are a, a hip hop journalist. I right? call myself a music journalist. Music journalist, music right? Journalist. You're a music music Put journalist. Some on his I'm name. so sorry. Please don't fight me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the nigga turned into Jason Derulo. Please don't. Hey. Uh, <laughs> don't mislabel. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what happened. Actually, niggas call him Usher, and he was fucking swinging. Like, keep your fucking Haitian fist and don't beat me up. <laughs> but no, uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm telling you, the the hands are loose. But anyway. Um, you said you were in, in too much of your emotions, and I know, yeah. you know, being an R&B fan, I've been uh, very vocal on my affinity for R&B music. I've always been that guy. I've never mm -hmm. shied away from it. Um, it is who I am, right? And I think a lot of that has to do with being in tune with your emotions. Mm -hmm. And I think as men, especially black men, we kind of shy away from that. Uh, you know, We shy away, but we're also taught being emotional is weak. Yeah. Growing up. That's why I'm Ooh. I love talking about this because I'm like, yo, like that is not healthy. It's so horrible. like that's why I bring it up any chance I get. It's like, oh, it's okay. Like, I, wouldn't you rather have a man who is very in touch with his emotions and very aware of analyzing feelings and stuff than having a very cold, like non emotional man that like doesn't let you know? Yeah. I just well, always tell I my want friends a woman. No, okay, but I'm sorry. Anybody that oh, no, 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 no that's what I meant. Like, so my women out so there, like just or, I don't know. I just ask them, like, you do you really want like, why are you so you mean, against, yeah. like, emotional men? If yeah. I feel like that's what you need to, like, get closer to them. So I've always been an advocate because it's, it's it's a bad thing that really spirals into people just not being able to express themselves. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I think, you know, and I, I want to ask you and leaving you, you know, primarily and correct me if I'm wrong, but you primarily produce in R&B. Yeah, that's right. True. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's correct. Yeah. Have you ever done like a oh, fucking oh, trap yeah, record? I don't <laughs> Have you ever done like a yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, like I'm, a I'm, French Montana by Leaving? Oh, wait, 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 wait. For wait, 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 wait. wait have you? I, think, I, think, I think you should call me a music producer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I work in a lot of different genres, but primarily R&B is like my go-to. Got it, got it. And do you think, you know... Obviously, outside of the sonics and the aesthetic, uh, do you think it's because you are kind of tapped in with your emotions or maybe you can kind of relate to the artist or what the artist is saying in that genre opposed to like drill? Right. Oh, yeah. I, I would assume yeah. kids your age are really into that drill vibe, really into you know, hip hop, rap. Like I just watched the Juice World documentary. And I know he's a little bit older than you, but I feel like he catered to your demographic, your age range, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where Juice World, he may not be for people my age and older, but for, for people in your demographic, he was a fucking yeah. god. Was the among, guy. You know, like he was that guy, right? So I know... Uh, People really aren't gravitating towards R and B. Like you and I can have a conversation, and this is when I knew you was my guy, bro. Like I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> At first, I was a little doubtful. I said, "Who is this little Dev nigga is gonna on be, this podcast?" Devin's gonna be so mad at all this leaving press. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but this is when I knew when we were coming to the studio. And y'all know, am I always late, Reggie? Am I the latest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucked up. I might live the Pierre's closest. always on time. Pierre's always on time. I'd be early, except be for early. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I would come into the <laughs> studio, you would always be on the aux. 
And I appreciate somebody who can navigate the aux. It is not an easy task. Like this man was cooking not. before you came. He was cooking, but he does he that. Cooking, but he does that every single week. He does to the point where I don't even ask anybody else. Yo, leave it. <laughs> Hook up your phone. <laughs> like I'm, I just scream it out. Like yo, turn turn on your music because mm-hmm. you got that ear, and not just the ear of like the new school of today's era. But me and you could connect on anything, bro. We could talk about Avant. We could talk about yeah. Joe. We could talk about any time period of music mm-hmm. and you kind of connect. So for you, I want to ask you, like, what is it that gravitated you towards R&B music specifically at your age? I realized early on that I'm not the gangster. I'm not the, you know what I mean? And I mm-hmm. don't want to be it. Mm-hmm. So I, I lived in Long Island. I lived not in a hood mm-hmm. i would say i lived in the suburbs mm-hmm. um and growing up i always knew like i was always emotional so i didn't want to be the the trap guy as far as that's what that's not what i consumed i wasn't mm-hmm. smoking i wasn't you know what i mean i wasn't always the i want the girls guy or let me get the bitches and <laughs> uh all these whole you know what i mean all that and mm-hmm. that, that was never me and even though i grew up around people who lived in the same environment as me they always envied that and i realized early this isn't me i don't relate to this and once i found something that i could relate to i think i said it on the first time i was on this podcast Mm -hmm. devon's music fuck you devon but this (laughs) is devon's music made me feel like oh he's speaking to me he drew in people like me just be different just be who you are Mm -hmm. and it's cool uh cool with that once i realized that early on thank god i realized that early on because not only did i attack what i want i applied it to what i wanted to do which was make music but i also um and you're years ahead of us like (laughs) you're a decade ahead of us i can't i can't wait to see what you're gonna be like in seven years yo we tell him this every week (laughs) i love y'all i love y'all um but yeah uh not only did uh thank god i caught it early because not only did it Give me a head start on what I really wanted to do, especially at a time when trap music ran the world and mm-hmm. nobody really cared for R&B. Um, so that kind of gave me a head start. But I, it also put me in a headspace of uh, controlling my circle mm. and not trying to fit in, not trying to be that guy, especially knowing I'm not. I, I never wanted to be the two-faced guy or the guy to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, try to switch codes whenever I'm with the guy. You know what I mean? I, I just didn't yeah. want to be that. Yeah. So growing up, that has always been a big thing for me. Like all my friends know I'm emotional. They know I'm not the mm-hmm. fighter. I'm not the. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, they know I love R and B. You know what I mean. So yeah. um, and I think that helped weed out the people that I wanted to stay in my life. And now mm-hmm. my team is the greatest thing I could have asked for. You know, that's dope. That was Incredible, such a good man. answer. Oh my gosh, <laughs> are you a Potter? That is Am such a good answer. <laughs> like wow. No, nah, it was, and I think it's important for people to hear those messages, right? Mm-hmm. Because you know, a, a, a lot of times we feel like we kind of got to conform to what we deem or what society deems as uh, attractive yeah. or marketable mm-hmm. or just like, hey, this I, I can't be me. And I think there's been a common denominator but, uh, amongst the three of us that maybe the two of y'all don't know, but just me being who I am and just speaking to the, the two of y'all, it's been like at an early stage or at some point in your life, you kind of recognize like, yo, I'm different, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? And it's okay for me to be different. Like, I remember, I remember very, very fucking vividly. <laughs> but I remember in high school, everybody was like, you know, on, and I had I had phones, I had Jordans, I had all that. Like, I actually used to work at a sneaker store. So I always made sure, like, I had, but I knew at certain points, I didn't always want to wear my 13s. I didn't always want to wear my 11s, my Space Jams, Altitudes, whatever the case may be. Phone pauses, Yeezys, when they first came out. Like, I was in tune. You wanted to be barefoot? Right. But, <laughs> right. I may, there was some days where maybe I wanted to throw on the bow shoes. Yep. Live in your truth. But a lot of niggas... Let the ankles out. Of, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people, they couldn't even fathom it. Yeah. Because it was like, wait, you're doing... You're wearing a button? What, if, yeah. what the fuck are you I doing? wish that I was here because he's definitely going to bring up the fact that he was the one, first one wearing like skinny jeans. <laughs> he, he loves, <laughs> yeah, saying, he loves yeah, telling yeah, us about that. He might have he been. I'll tell you one been. big thing about that uh, that has really helped me, I want to say, is the fact that, uh, like I said, I saw that early on in myself and... um 
thank God for that. And the biggest reason is so going back to our social media conversation, I um I basically I'm addicted to social media. Mm-hmm. Uh and I was scrolling, you know, you compare yourself, but I never compared myself clothes wise or like the parties. I was always an inside guy. But one thing I will compare myself to and hold myself at a high standard is my music. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking He's at He's nice, okay. My, <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like what has gotten me to where I'm at right now is the fact that I want to compete with the people who's been here for years. I'm like, yeah. I, I need to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. And if I don't, who, how am I going to compete with them? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? How am I going to make the mainstream? So the people like D-Mile, the people like Troy Taylor, uh, Camper, th- those people inspire me. And these people, her, they work for her, Jasmine Sullivan, um, SZA. You know what I mean? This is the mm-hmm. mecca of R&B right now. And my biggest thing is I always want to compete. So when I'm listening to Lucky Day, best believe I am studying. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I feel like uh, me catching on to that early helps because when you look at everyone who's changed things, everyone who's changed the music industry, uh, only because that's what I study, but it can apply to any other industry. Mm-hmm. Think about the people who've pivoted this shit. Kanye West, Pharrell Williams. Who the fuck looked like Pharrell and Chad? When Nobody. they came out, who sounded like them? When but the came fact out. that you even know that, yeah, you're very self aware. You know what I'm saying? But the the fact that he even knows that, like, bro, I remember when Nerd was new. Mm-hmm. You was a baby. <laughs> Why the fuck do you even know? The man studies. You know what studies it. That's what he was saying. He and studies the shit. Do, yeah. But I want, I want our <laughs> listeners to understand that anything that you want, and it goes back to an earlier conversation that we had, which was yo. Why don't I introduce myself to people as, hey, I'm a podcaster, mm-hmm. right? It's, more than it's that. because I value it the same way that Levin values production and music and the history of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, how, how do you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm a music producer and songwriter. I'm a creative. See, because that's overall. cool, though. Yeah, but that's, fine. <laughs> Y'all, I'm a producer. that's cool. That's fine. Because like, a lot of people yeah. limit um, being a producer to beats, but it's more yeah, than that. Nah, it's I'm being in the studio with an artist saying, like, yo, like, there you do that background, there you double, you do put this verse here instead. Like, it's more than that. People think it's just making beats, but yeah. there's more to it. So mm-hmm. it's a cool kind of umbrella term that you can get into deeper exactly. conversation with. And honestly, the whole goal is to pivot the industry. The same way I want to pivot the sound the same way D Mile has, the same way that Pharrell has you know Mm -hmm. what I mean these are dark child you know what I mean it's Mm -hmm. like the fact that we remember these names is because the people who have followed the pack have never been the people to change shit Mm. yeah what's the point I love that answer, man. Mm. Honestly, I, I, I'm going to call Devon Terrell. Yeah, you can stay home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next I'm going to let Devon. him know. Like, yo, you spot my We got day. this. We got yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, I ain't going to hold it. No, and my, my favorite off. part of your, um, you were basically preaching about in the beginning, you're basically like not wanting to pretend to be someone you're not. And I deal with that too, where I'm like, I realized really early on, that's why I always rep Jersey. I'm like, yo, I came from a nice <laughs> ass, calm little Korean family. Like I'm I'm never <laughs> trying to be like, yo, like, like you know, I'm never yeah, trying to be yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody that I'm not. So I feel like that has helped me a lot too. Cause no one can ever call me out on that. Like I'm really like just myself. So that like, yes, that's a, that's a big and key. They, pre- guys. they preached to me the other week, Alex and Devon, every, it feels like every few months they'll tell me, yo, it's Long Island. Mm-hmm. Oh, Long yes. Island. Even though I am from Brooklyn, I have to. Did I grow up in Brooklyn? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I grew yeah. up, I was shaped in Long Island. And mm-hmm. yes, I spent a majority of my life in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. But I cannot sit here and tell you guys that I would be the same person I am had I not made the move. I want I, I want to ask y'all, uh, and I actually want to start with Armand. Sure. Um, because, you know what? Let, let, me, let me flesh this out a little bit. Sure. So for me, over the last month or so, and Reggie, Pierre, definitely Pierre. Pierre, Pierre is my therapist. Okay, <laughs> that's my guy. Yeah, I didn't know it's you guys have weekly have. Monday calls. What about Not, me? And like every, <laughs> like I don't. I, <laughs> so this Monday, right? I felt like, damn, I don't really want to bother him, but Why? he called me. I don't Aww. know. So he was like, "Yo, let me make sure I keep up." I'm like, that's "We so here." Cute. But um, so for me, over the last month, I've, I've struggled with, and I want to know if any of like the the listeners have ever struggled with this. But I struggle with imposter syndrome. Whew. I've struggled with that because you know 
maybe it's because we're not taught to think more of ourselves. Maybe it's because we have to work 10, 15, 20, 25 times harder just to get to where our counterparts are. And then when you get there, you're like, yo, am I enough? Right. So I've struggled with imposter syndrome. And, you know, before these mics turned on, you were talking about, well, not talking about, but you mentioned, you know, you, you pivoted to uh, hip hop DX. Yeah. And then we all know Reggie. Reggie's phenomenal. Reggie has worked everywhere for every fucking number one friend, you know number what i'm saying like go. that's what I'm she does go. we, we could talk billboard we could talk genius we could talk revolt we could talk complex we could talk everywhere with Reggie, right so we got all these companies all these names again obviously you know just the company that we keep right there's always something that we can reference to like yo this person's greatness not only is it validated because i think they're great but there's greatness that thinks they're great too right yeah. and so for me, I've kind of struggled with that imposter syndrome because I went from an independent situation where I was kind of working and doing my thing. And, it, you know, it's a big fish in a small pot, in my opinion, in my view. Right. But then you go to like this mega fucking universe and then it's like, oh, wait, I'm not the smartest guy in this room. I'm not the most knowledgeable. I got mm -hmm. some homework to do. Um, and, and and you just doing so many different things, wearing so many different hats. Mm -hmm. Have you ever struggled with imposter syndrome? If you have, I would love to hear like how you kind of manage that. Because I'm sure not only myself, but there's people that's listening, men, women alike, who are like, yo, what the fuck? How did I get here? And am I good enough? Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, it's uh, my life has been like a mental whirlwind. Um, I grew up, with one older brother, I never, my, my dad was a football coach. My brother was is four years older than me. He played football. I played football. They won multiple championships. I've never won a championship in my life. Hmm. So I kind of reveled in the personal accolades when I got like an MVP award, when I got invited to an all-star game. Like that was, those were my wins. I was very much so about me. And I think part of it was feeling inferior to my brother and even my dad in a weird way that I overcompensated by like really hyping up my accolades. Mm -hmm. So throughout life, I've had a really big ego. Admittedly, I've had a big ego. I've been very confident, but I'm also super sensitive, super insecure. And I've really, I've gotten to a point now where I can really kind of compromise those things where I, I embrace my insecurities. I have my moments of confidence, but I also know like with every new level I hit, it brings more work. And, you know, one quote that I live by that I always remind myself is growth is uncomfortable. When mm. you hit a new point, like you with your new job, you're in a whole new setting, meeting new people, doing Tell new things, it. responsible for a lot more. You know, a lot of more things are on the line. So you're not, you're not going to get it immediately. Like think about a rookie who comes into the NBA. Mm -hmm. They're not automatically the best. Mm -hmm. they're not everyone's LeBron. No. Like there are people who are, you know, like. Jason Tatum, who have to kind of work their way up to that, or Trey Young, even though he's lit. I love Trey Young. But like, <laughs> but like you're not going to be amazing immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because you're still there. They want you there for a reason. Mm -hmm. You're capable. Just like Hip Hop DX wants me where I am, just like Revolt wants Reggie where she is. Like we all started somewhere and we worked to get to the point that we're at. So we deserve it. But uh, I, I love it. Drake's uh, most recent IG post, <laughs> his, his, his quote was... Of course you know this. Of course. Because <laughs> uh, I tweeted it last night because it, it, I read it and it like it's, it's so simple, but it's, it resonates so much. The reward for hard work is more work. Mm. Mm. You work hard, you achieve something, it feels good. And I'm kind of getting to the point now with this, with this journalism stuff, like where I, I still feel like a rookie and the big moments are really great, but it's like, all right, what's next? Like, cool, I, I did this so I, I could do more. And it's not like I'm not caught up in like a toxic cycle where I don't celebrate these things, but I just know where I want to be, I, ha I have to keep working. Mm -hmm. So you, you're, you're at, an, at an amazing place and you still have more leveling up that you can do. Mm -hmm. That means you just got to keep putting the work in, but never doubt where you're at. And whether you belong there or not, because the people who had the power to choose someone else chose mm -hmm. you. Mm. So that's just what, what I tell myself. And yeah. that's been so easing on my mind because uh, it's tough, man. Like imposter syndrome is a bitch. I actually, on one of our recent podcast episodes, we had Kojo Dodzi on. I don't know if you know him. I know Reggie knows mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about like the year he had, he's had and how he's just refinding himself. And like, this was maybe the, the, the white claws talking. <laughs> uh, but I was like, yo, people talk so much about body dysmorphia, but identity dysmorphia oh. is the craziest thing. You can be, mm. you can know how amazing you are one day, and then the next day just doubt everything. Like, mm -hmm. I, I do that with both. Right, exactly. I I, same. Do I have body dysmorphia? I might. 
I don't know, but I I I know when it's like it's that feeling of looking in the mirror and not recognizing yourself. Yeah, or like really thinking there's something. This this can relate to both, I guess. But like really thinking like there's something wrong and being hypercritical, mm -hmm. and then how you know you have body dysmorphia or identity dysmorphia is like you. Let's say in April I was like super fucking depressed. Cause I'm like, oh my god, I'm fucking fat. <laughs> but then now I look back. Now today I look back on April. I'm like, yo, I look fucking good. Yeah. But in that time you were being super critical and being so down on yourself. Yeah. And you don't know until you look in the rear view, and it's scary because it's like. I looked fine. Like, why? Yeah, you know, that that's yeah, what it, it could be applied to in, like, careers as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you don't know you're in the best days until you're past them. Mm -hmm. But my, my mindset is I have more best days to make, so I just have to keep working towards that and not get caught up in now and any L's that I feel like mm -hmm. I might have right now. So it's it's tough. Imposter syndrome is a bitch. It mm -hmm. is, it is if, like, fuck, COVID is a pandemic, imposter wow. syndrome is a fucking pandemic, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and it's, I don't think it's not social, unbeatable. I, I don't think social media helps. At all. At, at, at all. certain points, at all. you know what I'm saying? Thankfully, oh, yeah. I, I, I think I'm at a place now where I don't compare myself to anyone anymore because mm -hmm. that was a big thing, mm -hmm. like, especially with journalism. Like, you know, R R Reggie was, like, uh, she started a little before me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking to her, seeing how great she was doing, and knowing how capable I was, I was like, yo, mm -hmm. I... I want those opportunities too. Like I, I, I want to do those things and like seeing other people, my peers, and you start to think I'm better than that person, that person. Mm -hmm. But you thought you were better than me? No, okay, <laughs> <laughs> no. But I always, I was always mad calm when we have these conversations because I'm yeah. like, he's gonna get there, and now I'm yeah. like, yo, Armand writes more for Billboard than me, and I'm like, <laughs> good for you. Like, please take, yeah. take it. And it, it, it's funny, right? Because I, I always explain to people. So my my <laughs> my journey has been unorthodox mm -hmm. right i i didn't really i i did grind and i did mm -hmm. struggle don't get me wrong but one of my very first and few internships ended up going to the moon yeah right <laughs> like, <laughs> like wow you know, what happened you might right? have heard of it <laughs> i can't i can't fucking make it up there's no other way to go about it like i yeah. was struggling I was, I was grinding i was working at Armand and I interned together. Radio. we did the source summer mm -hmm. 17 that's fine and but you know the fucked up thing the fucked up thing is I applied to the source. Mm. I applied to Power 105. You applied I to applied Genius, to High 97. Mm. I applied to Genius. I applied to Complex. I applied to Bill. I applied everywhere. <laughs> everywhere to the point where i was waking up every single morning i'm double checking i'm following up emails oh, i've I been there graduated. i have been there no, listen to oh, how yeah. desperate i was i graduated no i've been there from college and was still willing to intern mm -hmm. and people were telling me fam you cannot intern that you is are not, not true. a collegiate student that's what i was told nah. i don't know if it was like, true yo, or i not, just want a foot in the door but that's what i was told right yeah. so i did it, it, it's not like i didn't want to go that route or I, I didn't seek to get that experience it's just the one thing that hit for me happened to fucking go f crazy it, we shit. went to the but moon we was number one in the world yeah i got to travel i went on a tour i did all these amazing things and so now i'm almost trying to work backwards because i feel like i skipped so many steps right did like, you you didn't skip steps you took your path that was your path yeah that's what i'm saying like hmm. all you the other things steps. that didn't work out they weren't supposed to work out like what would you have been doing if you were in a fucking no offense but like hot 97 internship because rather you, than you, what you, you actually you did. know what it is like the way that y'all said y'all met right mm -hmm. because y'all were both kind of in that same sphere yeah. right he was like oh shit reggie i know reggie and then she's like, oh, wait, spheres my overlap like yeah. jersey and then we both went to school upstate yeah. we both have the same oh my gosh we interact yeah. like so much oh got it she oh but yeah well, sorry, your point was no, not your point was not no, that that's good. That's she fire, thinks she's me no, <laughs> oh my god we have like the same exact tour timeline because the people we follow yeah. is like the exact same yeah but again you know why because y'all put yourselves in a position to even overlap that way mm -hmm. i didn't really give myself that opportunity or life the way that life played out it didn't really happen from that way that's okay. so where i just kind of went up and i was like oh shit so now people are knowing me and they're like oh yeah you do this and i'm like fam i don't know you <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm sorry. Like we don't, what can we talk about? But it's like, Oh yeah, you used to, you, you work with this person and you did that. And I'm like, yeah, but who the fuck are you? <laughs> right. And then I have to do my research and then I'm, I'm, I'm doing, you know, I'll become a student doing my due diligence. And it's like, Oh shit. I right, cool. Now let me kind of network. And it is, it, it's, it's not, 
is reactive is not proactive right so i had a very reactive kind of uh journey to where now i feel like i'm just now kind of catching up because i'm working in an environment where there's people doing things around my age and it's kind of similar to where before it was just on us on an island it was just me on the island it was like Literally, right. it was like just you <laughs> I was just like, oh shit I, i'm here and it's cool and i got mad follow like and people know me and i'm doing my thing but i didn't really like build anything so now i'm kind of building backwards you know what i'm saying does that make you sense mean like to networking me? too and, and, and exactly so for me that imposter syndrome felt a little bit more heightened yeah because i feel like yeah i did grind and i, I paid my dues trust me i paid my dues i was fuck i went through it uh <laughs> but now i'm in a place where i'm like all right you know what I feel like, you know, seeing people like Armand, seeing people like Levens, you know, kind of grind and, and, and seeing y'all just build your own path. And like, again, I started this episode introducing y'all as legends. Again, the word legend is subjective, right? The word legend is subjective. Anybody, my father, my dad, my dad, not many people may know him, but to me, he's a legend. Mm-hmm. Where I come from, the way I was built, the way I was raised, my father's a legend. My mother, she's a legend. There's nothing nobody could tell me about my mother that I won't say that that woman is not a legend. You know what I'm saying? So the word legend is subjective. So when I see, you know, the people that I'm I'm blessed and grateful to work with, and I'm like, yo, y'all are legends, it's because fuck what y'all did. It's what y'all are going to do. And that's why I say y'all are legends. Pierre. Reggie, Devon Terrell, Alex, everybody that I've been able to surround myself with, that's why I use that word. And that's why I say it. And I don't say it about everybody because mm-hmm. there's a lot of niggas I'll be like, yo, you keep doing your thing, man. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I see you. Yeah. I don't really see you, my nigga, but I think I see you, but you see you. Yeah. That's all I know. <laughs> but the people that I say, like, you know, I, I, I kind of really would vouch for and be like, yo, I, I, I know that they are going to be that next wave. And it's also motivating. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember uh, uh, seeing Armand, and let's talk about this real quick before sure. we get up out of here. I remember seeing Armand, and I don't know how you did it. See, this is this is why my words, man. Words are powerful, God damn it. Because this motherfucker is good. Of you course. Ca- you kept me up for like two weeks. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, here and I we was, go. it wasn't hate. Here we go. It was motivate. It wasn't hate. <laughs> it was motivate. It was like, it was a motivating factor. I'm like, yo, how the fuck did this nigga interview Bryson Tiller? Uh, I didn't interview him. I didn't. I didn't interview him. No, no, I, he, I he wrote. Tea. Yeah, it was oh, Pusha yeah, T. Yeah. Interview Push. I wrote about Bryson. And interview Bryson Pusha like tea. And me tweeted and his article out. And, and, and we kind of cool now. Bryson <laughs> Tiller <laughs> co signed you. Yeah. He wrapped his arm around you. He <laughs> called you. Yeah, virtually. and he doesn't do that. Like, he, he doesn't, he you know. He called you his buddy. <laughs> You're Bryson Tiller's buddy. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, what's what? Bryson Tiller's sign? What, well, like, what are we doing, you know? And I remember seeing that, and I'm like, oh, I got to work harder. Who, wait, Joe? What the fuck is a Joe Button? Like, he's cool, but <laughs> so this is Bryson Tiller. We got to bleep that out. No. <laughs> we got to bleep that uh, out. Compared to Bryson Tiller in the grand scheme of life, like, let's keep it a bug. And I think Joe will even say that. Like, Joe's a legend, too. Like, I'll never discredit him. Bryson a Capricorn. But I'm just saying. Wow. Shout out to that Capricorn King. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I don't give a fuck. But okay, Reggie. No, 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 I'm saying he's a Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. Yeah. Like that's my guy. Yes. Somewhere, but no, that's his guys. Really yes, guy. they're besties. But to just see, you know, like when you was moving and Pusha T, he he is is on wax. Is documented. Like that's one of my favorite rappers. To see you kind of put yourself in those positions, like, and it's funny because I've met Pusha T. Yeah, right? you met him before me. I met Pusha T, and I've worked alongside. Yep. Yeah. Pusha T, right? In some capacity. But I promise you, if Pusha T walked through this door, he wouldn't recognize me. He might. Nah, he would I wouldn't. feel like he might. Mm-mm. You know why? Oh, shit, you're Savon Slater. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because that moment the wasn't Don. about me. That, 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 that moment wasn't about me. That moment, you know, it, I, I, I was Wasn't you like getting the wing stop and shit? I did get a wing stop. How do you know that? I said that. I you mentioned that. that last, like, the second, the, when I was here, like, last yeah. March. Like yeah, that. we yeah. got that. We got, yeah, push you got a wing stop. stop. Yeah. You got the Louisiana rub? That's the best flavor. Uh, I don't remember. I know okay. the <laughs> wing stop was cold. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to. I think I got a little Duval and push it to your wing stop. And neither mm. one of them gave a fuck about that wing stop. But <laughs> I say all that to say, like, I remember, you know, like, if, if he saw me, he probably, 
it, he wasn't there for me. And I was just in that moment for that time to serve my purpose. And, you know, it was an experience for me. But for him, you know, he was there for what he was there for, right? Yeah. To get his message out on that platform for the, the people that he was there for. With you, it's a little bit different. Like, that interview was for you. Yeah. You locked that in with him. Yeah. Like, you put in the groundwork and got to that point by being you and just being dope having dope fucking work right and so i remember seeing that and i'm like i i, I gotta work harder <laughs> i gotta go harder like i love armand armand is great he does great work i uh, like but i have to I, I i just gotta go to that next level and that's the right attitude to have is using those moments where you see someone do something dope to channeling it into positivity for yourself yeah and not doing the motivated. negative comparing not doing being the like positive. that nigga oh, don't deserve sure. that fuck yeah, yeah that's, like, that interview oh, trash. that's no. some haters you, you know yeah. my shit not trash one but also like yeah like there's just too many people who don't do what you did they just they get down on themselves they're they feel they're inferior and they get negative towards everyone else and that's that's not Yo, the way and to there's do probably it. mad people who wish they were in Savon's position like oh. mad people who would Bro. kill to be in Savon's yeah. position I would shit yeah. <laughs> I would nigga fuck you <laughs> <laughs> yeah thank you my brother yeah. but I feel like a lot of people do and I don't mean to bring up any trauma or anything but when they like I feel like people be hating sometimes on yes. Savon, but that's out of jealousy. Like, I'm sorry 100%. if this triggers y'all, but it's definitely rooted in jealousy. Like, because if they send you a hate comment, <sighs> it's because they wish they were sitting on that couch where Savon was sitting. I feel like especially when people see how you got the internship by just tweeting him. Yeah. If niggas knew all they had to tweet Joe. Yeah, but it wasn't was you. Joe. You guys didn't do it. Savon did it, okay? So if stop the- hating. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just see like him getting so much hate, and I yeah. just hate that. I'm just like, bro, like... Yeah, bro. I I I, <laughs> I, 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 be taking that shit personally. Like, like whenever random people who would talk to me about the Joe uh-huh. Budden podcast would mention, him, I'm like, you don't know the shit he does behind. You the don't scenes know that. Yo, oh, niggas be talking mm-hmm. shit about me. They do. They do. Why would you <laughs> say people that? Hate. Oh, yeah. People hate. That's just no. Natural. Everybody loves you, Savon. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I would, but nah. I, it's just I, natural. It, it is natural. I, 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 I mean to. Nah. I mean to bring. <laughs> 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 you good, brother, you good. I, I, honestly, you that's know, what I, happens I, when you're a part of a big platform. Is naturally they more think negativity they know you. comes. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, we've talked about this before. Where you said like, oh, people think they know you, but they really. Bro, don't. I hate that shit. Yeah. Oh, I, I hate that shit. And I think you know, as you continue to grow, and you know, one of the first things I told Reggie, right? Because especially around the time Reggie and Devon they joined the podcast, there was a lot of negativity just circulating and i was kind of i don't know why my name was just attached to so much fucking negative energy it could be anything it was just really bad and i remember telling reggie i had to sit down i'm like yo reggie we are characters okay Mm -hmm. so when you see negative comments about me right remember that people don't look at me for me they look at me as part of the universe that Mm -hmm. i was in right so let's go to marvel (laughs) <laughs> or, or, or let's even go to WWE. Mm. I know you're a big fan of WWE, right? That's my life. Like, <laughs> The Rock is not Dwayne Johnson, mm-hmm. right? The Rock. The people is, will conflate the two. The, the Rock is the character on the WWE, and Dwayne Johnson is the man, the actor, and all that he is to, you know, the world outside of wrestling. And I had to tell Reggie, I said, Yo, Reggie, unfortunately, you know Savon, right? But they think they know Savon like the Don. Savon has never called himself the Don. Yeah, and you had like yeah, a that narrative makes, that they I, put on that you. That makes you uncomfortable. So I think I called you that in person. And he's like, I'm not don't call Don. me that. I was like, don't do that to me. Like I don't because that's I've never like it's not a self proclaimed thing. It's not like a, a childhood nickname. Where yeah, they like, put that narrative on you. It was yeah. like that. That was all, all right. I guess I'm the. Don, like I've mm. been a Don. Like, you ain't gotta tell me I'm the fucking Don. Like I know <laughs> this is me, right? But. I, I I don't know. I, I I think I think it was just you know I had to have that separation, mm-hmm. that conversation, of separation with you. And I feel like you had to do that because like again, again like a narrative was put on you that mm-hmm. like you didn't choose. But I think the whole character and separating that and to just kind of be able to numb yourself from like oh what people are saying about you. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be harder for me because I don't think I had a chance to just like be like this podcast i'm not like a character Mm -hmm. so if people were to say something it's really like because of like something that i said or something like that so i think it'll be harder for me to do that to like separate that but also no it's gonna be easy for me because if people do hate a lot of it is probably like projection and i feel like that helps people get through things but yeah that's a good point 
projection yeah. is so real. People mm-hmm. are so not aware of when they be projecting. It is. It is. It Whew, is. I could talk for hours about uh, that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, would. I realized that this year, a lot of the people that were stressing me out, I really analyzed it. I'm like, yo, they are projecting yep. onto me. Like how they are in their lives right now, whether mm-hmm. it be love life, career, they're projecting onto me. Yep. So once I really... I was like, wow, this is like so true. Once I really accepted that, now I'm chilling. You gain so much peace I'm chilling. when you like, recognize someone. I'm like, yo, not- why are you mad at me? I'm like, it's because you are upset. Mm-hmm. So, yep. yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, before we get up out of here, I got a question for y'all. Yes. Everybody, real quick. It'll oh, wait, be I have rapid beef fire. With, I have beef. But like, this is like a not serious topic, so you definitely should go first. Now, who you got beef with? Armand. What because, I I'm sorry, because I love talking <laughs> about food. I love talking about food. And when we talked about Wingstop, I just had to say it because, you know. But. On his last podcast, and I'd be listening because I'm a very supportive You friend. do. You do. Shout out to you. You were like um, garlic parmesan or lemon pepper, and everybody was slandering garlic parmesan. Yeah, and I, which I, is I don't annoying. know why. Yeah, I, I don't get why. Garlic parmesan wings are great. Yo, but Thank lemon you. pepper is like Yo, mad fucking salty for no reason. You like garlic parmesan too? I don't know. Well, he said they're great. Oh, yeah, garlic no, parm no, is no. great. Oh, oh, wait. I thought you said they weren't. No, no you said they weren't. I've were. had a bad batch of it before, but I, I like no, it. Was, it, was, it was Alexis <laughs> who said. Garlic parm is trash. Oh. I, no, I, I feel like, like you agreed with her. That's why I was like sad. I, I only you said, like garlic parm. I love everything. Oh. <laughs> like, there's nothing I don't the like. Reggie likes food. food. I love. I'm not a picky eater. My sister. That's, that's but yeah, one, anyway, I just wanted to air that grievance. No, and, no, but yeah, I'm, what was your I'm, question? I'm glad we clear that up. Nah, nah, I, I, see, because I'm a confrontational person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually yeah, very confrontational. So this or that? Let's go. Oh, I love. I love. I just want to go this or that. It's a real, really quick thing. This segment is brought to you by Tristan Thompson. Oh, so, oh my gosh. This or that. Reggie, you want to go first? Yeah, Reggie, you're going to go first. Yeah. Crackhead or serial cheater? That I'm dating? Khloe Kardashian, <laughs> over the Yo. last decade, <laughs> has been faced with Lamar Odom and Tristan Thompson. One, the former, the crackhead. The latter, the serial cheater who has babies on the side and says, Sorry on Instagram. Which would you prefer? Crackhead, serial cheater. Go. I would do neither because I know how to walk away. <laughs> you see, she's good. God I'm not fun. It. I'm she's sorry. Good. Like she's I don't good. participate in these she's types good. of things. I'm like, I let you go last. I know. I'm sorry. I'm boring. Armand. I'm boring. Do you want a crackhead <laughs> or a shorty who's gonna bust it open for the team? Don't, don't call me my answer. Pick one. For the team, damn. The team. That's the whole team. That's fucked up. Uh I would feel inclined to try to save a crackhead. Um, <laughs> but then that like takes so much from you. Exactly, which like, is why I was going to say, Oh, as crazy as it sounds, I would go with a serial cheater. Damn. Wow. You're a good man. That's tough. Yeah, I'm Leave it. I'm young. I, I must be young because I'm going with the crackhead. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got, hey yo, we going with the crackhead. We crackhead probably we put could, it down. And, you know, Lamar, sorry. Lamar, he's doing a little better. I, I assume. Yeah, he's trying. Well, he's, he's, he's fighting. He's, he's fighting, fighting people. Aaron Carter and. You know, he's getting up his health and he's he left the brothels alone. He hasn't had a brothel. I, I, ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie, I think dealing with a crackhead would be fun. You know what I mean? There'll be some fun. Anyway, be some fun uh, thank you for tuning in. You can get fun. anything you Need want to know exactly. for a crackhead. For a Twizzler. All you gotta do is say I got <laughs> this is a, rock, a little crack on the side. Dealing What's the pussy? Yeah, yeah. What's the pussy? Yeah, I got some he crack said, with you. Like, crack you, a little crack. you a little bit crack? Oh, you <laughs> freaking little bit crack in your bag of cheese, nigga. I'm anyway, serious. Thanks for but tuning just in. Think about it. Uh, we'll be back next week. No, I'm kidding. Yo, I'm serious. <laughs> like a serial cheater, you got to think like, I. Right. Now, who's she cheating on me with? Does he got money? Exactly. Does he got a nice car? Like with the crackhead, you could just do the salt bay right on the chicken. <laughs> That's it. Just sprinkle a little bit of crack, but with the serial cheater, like, like imagine, especially if she's cheating on me with people that's not on my level. Like, they have to do much for, for the box. Yeah, all this work I put in, and you just giving it up because he offered right? you a donut. Come on. Christian out, yeah. Thompson cheats on a Kardashian consistently, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, think about I think they got it. The hat. Wait, so which one would you pick? Crackhead. <laughs> I seen how Whitney loved Bobby. <laughs> like, <laughs> it wasn't just me, my nigga. I seen it all. That was love. love. Yeah, I maybe lo- it's not all bad. And, and I love love, nigga. Like the fuck. There's passion in there. There's some passion. They ain't never giving up. We gonna ride together, die together. You I thought wanna I was ride with you, baby. Fucking Vin Diesel in this motherfucker. I <laughs> shine my head up, ride together, and die together. God damn it.
So, yeah, I, I just wanted to play a quick game. We don't got to talk about Tristan Thompson because I think we all know he's a serial cheater and those kind of guys, you know, like, they... they. <laughs> I just think it just didn't surprise anybody. We're all just like, okay, like, again? Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost... Like, was it's, anyone shocked? It's secondhand embarrassment. But I will, yeah, ta- I I will say he got good taste. <laughs> like... The women that he be cheating Yo, on. Mark, you gotta go. Nah, they be fine. Yeah, we need bro. to cut the cameras. He be all right. Like, imagine mopping the ocean with a crackhead. At least, <laughs> at, at at least he's not like cheating on her with crackheads. You know, it could be a lot worse. Like he's cheating on her with women who seem to really got I think things it's going. It's time to end the episode. Really? Like, is yes. This it? Like, <laughs> what are we talking about right now? We, this is this, taking a this turn. Is, this is current events. Like, I love do you have a this or that? Oh, I feel like I would have a good this or that. But I just, this or that? I didn't think do that. I have one? We could do this next week. Um, if y'all want, I could just keep shooting. Yeah, keep shooting. If y'all don't, Pierre, like, like, yeah, 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 do you have one? We could just keep shooting the shit. Like, no, no social media for a month or no sex for a month. Oh, social shit, social Wait, media. Yeah, I so feel like no sex is cool. easy when you're just fucking actually like in control of yourself. You could just be like, yeah, I'm not fucking for a month. We're not all Alex. No, <laughs> Alex has been I, abstinent for so when you say years. sex, <laughs> you're, you you, you're not bu- you're not busting a nut in any you way for I a can't month. Get busy on you're me. not you're not doing and you're not. Cause can nobody, he, like, nobody can love me it? better than me. No, well, no, you can't. You can't bust. You can't touch your month. penis ever. For Thirty. What? Well, Alex be saying semen. semen Thirty retention? days. Not retention. Nah, I ain't got retention. that. Ain't got I don't that. think that that's that hard. I really don't. You don't. Like, I'm. Ge- I genuinely think that's you not don't that got hard. a dick. Yeah. I was <laughs> okay, that's true. You ain't never. I don't, off, my nigga. You ain't never. Ju- you ain't never like I don't. up some shit and say, "Yo, you know what? I'm about to go crazy." You're right. I have no. I have no response to that. Go crazy on me. Like you ain't oh, never did me. that. Like I don't know what it's like as a woman because I never had that. I'm gonna give it to Simon. He but got know, me there. For me, thirty days. Like I don't even think niggas in jail go thirty days. Like that's however really they that get hard. It. Thirty days. Oh 30 my days. god, you guys. <laughs> oh you uh, man, thirty days is crazy. Answer your question. How about you? What you doing? This or that, Mister No Nut Man? Uh, I want a very long period without. Sex, so I'd probably okay. do the no sex for But you said you can't. can't. But you said you can't. You said you can't get busy on you. Yeah, it's fun. That's cool. It's fun. See, see, I gotta be young. Huh? Leavens. What about you? <laughs> you know, I gotta be young. I'm turning off Instagram. Yeah, I ain't never. He I just said I'm addicted. I'm going Instagram cold turkey. Tomorrow. I thought you was addicted to Instagram, though. I know. So what you really addicted to, Lil? <laughs> <laughs> what you really? Oh, addicted you picked to? the other one. That that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a college student. <laughs> that I'm a college addicted student. Addicted to that X videos. I feel you, brother. <laughs> I feel you, my brother. I feel what you. What are you I'm really a, I'm a, addicted I'm, to? I'm a college student. All right, bro. cool. Well, we 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 had a ton to to kind of discuss, but I guess I'll I'll, I'll leave that. For next week <laughs> When we return Armand bro Thank you for pulling up On such short notice uh, Again uh, You can catch him On Stay Busy Podcast The Stay Busy Podcast Please let everybody know Where they can find you I feel like you really Resonated with a lot Of our listeners I know you resonated With me right Because uh, a lot of guys A lot of men Especially black men We don't really talk About our emotions We don't really know How to really tap Into that side yeah. And even if we do We're a little bit Afraid to say it And, and, and being that You know you came On this podcast And you talk about about it on your podcast i think is 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 brave not only brave but i also think that you know it it inspires people to do that right because once you said it i felt like you know what damn i do remember when everybody was looking at me a little bit crazy wearing boat shoes and fucking (laughs) whatever to Mm -hmm. you know like button down shirts and like i was dressing like the white boys that be like I'm going to tell my dad on you <laughs> as a black man. And I don't, like, I'm ashamed of it. But at the same time, like, I did that no, shit. Living so the I truth. can't do it. Yeah. Like, I was I was one of those guys. Like, I didn't always, like, I had my moments where I, I, I did the jerseys and I did the, the back bands and, you know, we did all that other shit. But I also remember wearing, like, the rock and roll fucking Chains, chain yep. things yeah. on my side. And I felt... Empowered You're wearing Ed Felt Hardy Fucking imp- Oh yeah I was king Ed Hardy I was right. wearing a boot like Ed Hardy on uh, Jamaica Ave yes, With sir. the see through Air Force Ones And the Lot 29 Bugs Bunny Fucking Crossover Yeah I had all that 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was confused. But anyway, Armand Sadler, <laughs> please let the people know where they can find you at, my brother. Yep. So every Monday, 9 a.m., stay busy with Armand Sadler, responsible discussions on the music business and the music culture. And we are fortunate we bring in some incredible guests. Um, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Audio Mac. You can catch our YouTube visuals as well. We're in this beautiful studio. Why not look at us? We look pretty good. Beautiful black, melanated, hydrated. You can also follow me at Armand Sather. I got a wrestling podcast, too, for those who are interested. It's called The Rewriters Room. We release bi-weekly. New episode coming next week on the A-Show RNC channel. Also Spotify, Apple, all that good stuff. Um, and, yeah, check out my my articles. You can follow me at Armand Sather. I think I said that already, but I put I post all my shit. So f- Twitter and IG, Armand Sather. Um, and, yeah, shout out to y'all for listening. Shout out to the loyal need-to-know community. This is an incredible podcast. Y'all are listening. Y'all make it amazing. They make it even more amazing And it's just It's a blessing to be here Thank you my guy I aspire to get a voice As deep as yours One day Yeah when he was saying that I was like wow yeah, I, was <laughs> like, yeah, I was like oh shit Hold oh, on Let me I might have to throw A little bit of testosterone In that purse See boss when I do these ass Motherfucker Y'all niggas They never get me But anyway Leave it <laughs> My guy Leave it Please let the people know uh, What music you're working on What you got coming up You know please Do not get me beat up By Devon Terrell So <laughs> do not say anything You're not allowed to say But yeah. where can the people Find you my brother uh, You can find me all, Everywhere at Prod by LG P R O D by L G N J E A N. Uh, and all producers and engineers, if you want to uh, holla at me at LJ Music Archive on Instagram, a new music library where I'll be selling loops, samples, uh, a bunch of my secrets, a bunch of my drum kits and everything, and I'll just be giving away, uh, giving it away over there. So it's happening with me over there. As far as new records, uh, this quarter is looking great. I can't say a lot, but um, new single next month. Every every week next month. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Can't wait to see what you do. Again, uh, I thank you guys for pulling up on such short notice. Uh, Reggie, as always, yo, we held it down. When you like, yo, we did I can't that. believe our guys are naive. Uh, no, I can't wait. I got sad shit. right now. <laughs> Devin yeah, Alex, right now. They, it, it's not like one is missing. Yeah, Both of them are missing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Devin <laughs> Alex went to Arby. That was Arby's. funny. <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> it's funny, right? They was like, "Yo, Savon, you was out last month. <laughs> Watch this." And then they both just was like, "Yeah, fuck it, we ain't coming." Nah, I'm loyal. I'm not missing a. I appreciate an episode. that. We Great. definitely appreciate that. Again, you guys can always find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple. Uh, we are not on SoundCloud, but we are on Audio Mac. Alex is always taking submissions on Audio Mac. Please make sure you email C- um, Need to Know Sounds. There we go. Mm-hmm. I was about to say CMOS, but we got <laughs> Need to Know Sounds at gmail.com to uh, give your submissions to Alex. He's always going through the music. He's listening. He is super, super tapped in. Mm-hmm. And as always, purpose CMOS gel, like we said, at the top of this episode Alex was leaking Hopefully you don't Got that leakage Hopefully Actually trip, trip, trip. I pray that you do Get that leakage You got pretty good genetics But anyway Purpose Seamoss Gel It has over 90 minerals And nutrients That your body needs Again As I always say Anything that you need To know about Seamoss Is on the website PurposeSeamossGel.com uh, We got three different Flavors over there We got mango We got strawberry And we got the base flavor I am also proud to say I am working on on sea moss gummy bears. Ooh. Yes. I cannot different. I cannot wait to get that out to the people. But again, if you're listening to this podcast, if you check the description for 20% off, you can type in need to know pod all capitals at the checkout. That'll give you 20% off on all purpose sea moss gel. It builds your immunity. It uh, it promotes uh, brain function. It promotes weight loss, detox. Again, I am not a doctor, so the FDA, please leave me the fuck alone. But for the professionals, all that information is there from them. So, again, that is PurposeSeamossGel.com. Need to know family. We love. We appreciate you. Reggie, thank you, as always, for being the doll and the superstar that you are. Aww. And on that note, I would be remiss if I didn't end this podcast with Some heat. my new favorite artist. <laughs> Oh wait, no, that's Stevie. <laughs> yeah, I was like, he's not new, well, huh. and he's not my favorite artist. <gasps> he's not my favorite artist. Oh, he's my favorite. Nah, that's my nigga, but he ain't my favorite. <laughs> this is my guy, the two piece king, the Haitian Dundada, the Haitian Dundada. Jason Derulo. Need to know family is what you need to know when you need to know on the Need to Know podcast. We love, we appreciate you, and we out. Listen to these tones. Savage love. Did somebody, did somebody break your heart?
my shit. I ain't gonna hold you. This is my shit. I love this song. He be smoking shit. Niggas not seeing Jason in the verses. Like, like, <laughs> and he will fuck you up. <laughs> it's what you need to know, when you need to know, on the you need to know podcast. We out of here. Peace, y'all.